Foo Fighters, Best of You on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Alright. Alright? Carl's had a bad week. I'm gonna say that straight away. It's, there's a, it's a, it's, he's tried to rule out stress in his life. Yeah. But he's had a bit too much stress this week, haven't you? One, a phone call from his mum, stressed him a little bit. Right. Um, something he said in a magazine about his auntie. Okay. Coming back to haunt him. Auntie uh, Nora. Auntie Nora. Yeah. yeah. Don't name her. <laughs> oh, she no, knows who she is. No, no. Okay, we won't name her. Right? We just say it's the- it's the one who fighted for five minutes and as, um, he got saw a skirt when he was young and a fanny like a split tennis ball. So it could be any of me on his. That coming up. And also a bloke, um, in Times Online, um, Chris Campling. Yeah. Did a review of the show. Right. And basically said that Carl Pilkington is a creation of Gervais and Merchant. Well, if only that were the case. He, he said, um, he started off saying he liked the show. Yeah. He was excited. Said it was a good show. Um, a lot of the, uh, I'm already- I'm already questioning his critical faculties. <laughs> yeah, exactly! And, uh, basically said that, um, uh, we didn't contribute much, or seemingly didn't seem to contribute much, and I- and we- we couldn't sort of like, uh, ad-lib or anything, we just laughed at, uh, particularly me, uh, laughed at, um, Carl Pilkington who was coming up with some, you know, quite funny stuff, yeah. right? But then he does a twist on it, he goes, but the thing is, we're the puppet masters. He's a created person. We've created the, uh, um, persona Carl Pilkington for our own amusement. Right. He bases this on simply that we talked about, what was it we talked about? Um, the Chinese not aging well, and right. you heard him talk about that on my DVD. But clearly I, I say, Carl, remember when you were talking about that? It's a news or oh, member in the week, and so he thinks it's all scripted now. Imagine if this show was scripted. I'd be ashamed. Yeah. If this show was scripted, I would send <laughs> back the BAFTAs for the shows we've- the actual shows we've written, and I would and say- I'm not having a go at Chris Campling, he's, he's nice about our other work, he likes The Office, and yeah. he likes my stand-up and everything, and he likes the show, but he's saying, because we, we're not spontaneous, we, we script this and invented Carl. It, so he's, he's like, you know, we, we've invented another Gareth. If we had created Carl, I would, I would not have squandered a character that good on this poxy radio station. Absolutely. Also, does he know that we spend about three months on half an hour script? So how long does two hours of trouble? <laughs> but the main thing is, as if this could be scripted. It's dreadful. <laughs> it's sh shocking. Or maybe this is scripted. Hang on, you've, you've lost me now. Let me just well, check maybe, the maybe Chris Campling does not exist. Uh, maybe I've made him up. I don't know what to believe. See, the name, the name doesn't wash with me. What was his name? Chris Campling. Sounds- sounds odd. That's something that I made up, isn't it? Campling's almost like- it's almost like a joke, it's almost like a gay name, isn't it? Or see, is it I, Campling? See, I think this is scripted. Yeah. I think I've probably made this whole link up, and Carl is a creation. Campling, that's not a real name. No. I made it- I should've come up with something better. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Down to the river. By Bruce Springsteen on XFM 104.9. So, uh, yeah, that little fella in the Times thought Carl was just a puppet. We created him, he's an actor. What's the, what was his, what's his act, what's his actor's name? Um, Brent Hogwell. <laughs> we, yeah, we got him it. from, we got him from, uh, a spotlight. Yeah. Brent Hogwell. This uh, stupid dopey Mancunian accent, he just puts that on every week. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, he speaks rather like Hugh Grant. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we just got this whole world around him, we set a whole- what do you think about so that? He had his head shaved, suddenly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So yeah, does he- would he think that, you know, maybe if he's looked online and seen me head, and he's noticed how round it is and that, does he think it's sort of been, sort of, you know, morphed into that <laughs> shape just for the show, just for two hours on a Saturday? <laughs> yeah. You would spend five <laughs> hours in prosthetic makeup like John Hurt in The Elephant Man. <laughs> <laughs> Everything oh, about him was made up. Yeah. We created him, we created- well, oh, because I remember coming up with Arnie Nora. Oh, yeah, yeah, You yeah. said, Rick, we need another character. I said, what about giving him an Arnie Nora? Doesn't sound convincing, I said. Yeah, and you said, what is it about? I said, well, I don't know, um, she fighted for five minutes and she's got a fanny like a split tennis ball. <laughs> no one's gonna believe that. Yeah. Oh, that brings us neatly. Well, let's put that to bed now. So, Chris Campling, honestly, honestly, we do not script this shambles of a show and Carl Pilkington really is like this. If you want, we- you can meet him. 
We, I, I'd love to send Carl for a drink with Chris Campling. Can we do that? <laughs> and then he'll eat his words. Chris, if you're listening, honestly, this isn't a stitch up. As I say, I'm not having a go at you. It's a very well written article. Um, uh, it's very, very fair. <laughs> you're just complimenting on, on his grammar. Yeah. It's a very well written <laughs> no, article. No, no, I'm saying we're not having a go. He's he's, that it's not like he snagged us off. He's just, I would just love him to meet Carl Pilkington. People in the street country and say, is Carl like that? And I, I so want them to meet him. Yeah. Um, or, or maybe he can send in, if he's online, um, he can send in five subjects for Carl to talk about that we couldn't possibly know about, just so he knows that we just really do throw things at Carl and that drivel comes out. Imagine if it was scripted. But anyway, so Chris Campling or anyone who knows Chris online, get him to email us and with five subjects that Carl can talk about. It's a good idea, isn't it, Carl? It is like I'm the elephant man the way I'm being treated now. <laughs> Just sort of like I, I scripted that. Him. I wrote that joke last night. Mm, are you sure? Or was it yours? I don't know. I Carl, Carl enters and says, I'm like the elephant man. Hang on, let me just check the credits on the script. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what though, Steve, that Go I found on. out about the elephant man when Go I was on. talking to Ricky. What? You know the only bit that's- that was normal on him? Oh yeah, no, it's, uh, it was in the film. You know right. the bit in the film? I was watching it one day, it was on, and I said, look, your favourite film's on. And it came to the bit where, um, he was being exhibited. Uh, and he was naked behind the screen to all the doctors. Go on, what did you say? And there's a bit where he goes, um, uh, and strangely, um, the only thing that is normal are his genitals. They're untouched by this disease. They are totally normal. Right, what did you say? It's a bit annoying, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the only bit that you'd want as an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> the only bit he'd won that sure, was like, was an, like elephant. an elephant. Yeah, no, yeah. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> he said, and he got the head. <laughs> <laughs> so, so other stressful things. But so anyway, you're. What, what's the anti Nora thing? Sorry, I should. Anti X. Anti X. What did she. Yeah. What, why is she upset? Well, he mentioned her in Zoo. He did, did this uh, thing for Zoo magazine, and he, and he mentioned about when he looked up her dress, it. Um, oh, it she had a. Yeah, what? By accident, remember? <laughs> You were going around looking up your elderly relatives' dresses in case they for weren't people, wearing- For people who've not heard Carl talk about this in the past, yeah. just explain quickly again yeah, what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it at all. When I was a kid, right, Auntie Nora used to come around- uh, my auntie used to come round. <laughs> As if there's any ambiguity now. Yeah. My auntie used to come round and that, and stay, right. And I, uh, I, I'm sat on the floor watching the telly, right. <laughs> She sat on the sofa with a caftan on. <laughs> I turn round, right, and it's it was it was there. It was looking back looking at, at me, right, and we've we've mentioned this, and I just Ricky sort of said, "What did it look like?" <laughs> and you know, a split tennis ball came to mind. That's what we talked about, right? So anyway, Zoo magazine when they did the interview. And she's the one that used to put a valance on everything, isn't it? Well, not everything, obviously. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I've done this. So you did interview in Zoom. Yeah. And, uh, and like they said, you know, do you, again, it was like, you know, do you plan stuff and, and do you worry about stuff when, uh, you, after you've done the show, you're worried you've upset anyone? And, you know, I was saying, uh, really, I forget people are listening. Uh, and, you know, we're just having a chat with mates and that. I said, but now and again, I do worry, uh, when I'm on my way home from the show and that, and I'm thinking about what we've talked about. And I was saying, you know, the an Auntie Nora, in oh, <laughs> Auntie Nora <laughs> in incident. Yeah. Uh, incident. You know, and water guy. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so this was in there, right? And I, and I was saying in the magazine, you know, but I think I got away with it. She doesn't doesn't listen to the show, but you know, and I don't think she reads Zoo magazine, so <laughs> <laughs> she's more of a nuts <laughs> woman. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so my mum calls up oh, the, other, uh, the other week, right? Oh. And she goes. Uh, uh, wish you wouldn't, you know, talk about an Auntie Nora and that. And, uh, I was like, oh, so how do you know about that? She goes, well, one of your cousins have called us up and said they've, they've read the article, you know, the article about it. So, uh, so yeah, that's why we don't want to talk about it, really. So he's, oh, he stitched you up. Hmm. So do you know what Auntie X has made of this? Do you know if she was upset or not? Uh, well, she doesn't, doesn't know about it. Cause, she, I mean, maybe she, maybe she, she's always thought it looked like a split tennis ball. <laughs> Maybe you're just in sync, you know, because you're relatives and stuff. Maybe she knew instantly. Even if you hadn't named her, she'd have thought, hang on, so I farted for five minutes once. Yeah, that's not really ambiguous, it could well is it? Be me. If you hear that, like, someone who farted for five minutes has got a, 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 a found, like, a split tennis ball, you're gonna go, I wonder if he means me. Yeah. You're gonna remember or that. Or Andy Jackie. Is it, it could be Andy Jackie. <laughs>
<laughs> oh god. <laughs> and he got in trouble. You know last week when he was going to the wedding? Let's, like, let's talk about that in a bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. In between days, XFM 104.9 with Steve Richard Carville. The Cure in between days on XFM. So, Carl, you were going to a wedding last week. Was it last week or the week before? No, it was last Saturday, right? Yeah. And he went. He said, uh, "Looking forward to it." He went. Now it's going to be boring. Suzanne was listening. Knows that the uh, the couple. Uh, we're taping the show, so she had to get in there before he didn't she? She went up to him and said, look, when he- you're whispering back to the show and he says it's gonna be boring, he didn't mean you, he meant weddings in general. I love the fact she has to run around and clean up after him. It's <laughs> great, isn't it? How was it? Do you not like weddings? You're not a fan of them? Uh, they're only good for the- for the people involved, aren't they? What are you talking about? You're getting free food, free booze, free music? Yeah, but- it's not- it's just all they're hanging about and there's loads of people there you don't know. Absolutely, I agree. Do you know what I mean? You, you've got to make an effort. And yeah. And uh, even the bit that was important, right, when they were getting married, right, there wasn't enough chairs- chairs because it was, you know, all the family gets the chairs, don't they? So I was sort of stood at the back. Selfish. <laughs> <laughs> stood at the back of that watching and uh, I couldn't hear what was going on because a woman was breastfeeding the baby. Oh, But what- what? How loud was this baby? Because no way! You couldn't hear what was going on! Yeah, so oh. it was- it was slurping and that and it, she, she was like- I- I just thought, how hungry <laughs> is it? Could it not have waited? Because you've all got to wait for the buffet or whatever That's later. I don't know. But also just in this Well, there was two, wasn't there? Why didn't you- Why didn't you- <laughs> The only thing that annoys me with weddings is the gift. It's the gift thing, because like- you buy these gifts, right? You spend a little bit of money, maybe. You know, I, I like to be a little bit lavish if I go to a wedding. You oh, well, no, come on. You get a gift, right? You package you're it up. And, laugh. and I don't know about you, Rick, but you, I like to see the response when I give a gift to someone. I want to, I want to see that the feedback from that. You yeah, know, this is very much. You know, I, I want to see what it is that's Jane bought them on, on you know, yeah, and exactly. put my name to it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. sometimes I have to. Oh, thanks for the. I go. Oh, no worries. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. But, you know, certainly, I mean, we talked about it before, but certainly, you know, it's the, the amount of- the amount of money spent and the amount of time given to the gift should be correlated by the amount of the response you get. Absolutely. If I give a book token, a shrug is fine. <laughs> <laughs> but if I give, you know, a sizable, I want kind of- I want them to be showing it to friends, if it's a bar, I want them to show yeah. it to barmen, you, other you people, strangers. Go, look, look what Steve Merchant got me, yeah. he's the greatest man in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You go to a wedding, you turn up with a gift, you could have spent, you know, upwards of fifteen pounds on it. <laughs> you turn up, you walk in, you say, excuse me, where's the bride and groom, I want to give them this gift. And so Bloke, normally the brother-in-law says, oh yeah. no, oh, no, the no, brother-in-law's no. mate. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, they're too busy to see you right now. Just stick the gift on this big table with all the other ones. Yeah. And um, they'll get back to you in a week. It may be six to eight weeks after the honeymoon. They may be write you a note. They won't thank you personally. They'll write you a note. It'll be a general thank you. It's and a general your, thank your, you. Your name in different type. Yeah, but it might have some vague reference to you know to yeah. what you did, but it won't yeah. really be personalised. Yeah. The it's set of mugs again will be in different types. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Steve Merchant, <laughs> yeah. for your wonderful gift. We uh, we love mugs. <laughs> yeah, yours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, a, and a photocopied signature. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, no, it's not right, is it? Oh dear. And, and also, uh, of course, as well, if there's a, and if there's a baby involved, you know, perhaps they, you know, they they had a kid out of wedlock, and that's mean? where they're getting married. There's normally the little baby signature as well. Oh. Like, oh, I know, like the baby signed it. Oh. From Paul and Sharon and little Billy. <laughs> <laughs> be Ben, be Ben, ben these days. Ben. I reckon. Yeah. What do you think, uh, Carl? How was the wedding, by the way? Did he find you? Um, Suzanne sorted something out. Yeah. What? Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah. actually, no. We, we're going away. I'm a week away with them. That's 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 your gift. Yeah. What you're going away? No, we're going away to Cornwall or something, and uh. uh yeah, that's it. We've, we, we've sort of paid for the- for a place to stay and uh, coming along and that. And their gift is to spend a week with you in a s confined space. They love it. They'll, they'll have a great time and that. Will they? Yeah, it's fine. Can yeah. I- sorry, can I get a pen? I'm making a note of how many times you say, and that, during today's show. And so far there's three. I've noticed three. I'm just gonna- I'm just make a note because I think we can have a competition here. <laughs> and if you can predict how many times he's gonna say, and that, mm -hmm. the closest one wins um, some of the crap DVDs that we've got on offer. Hold on, tell, tell them we've got a lot of 49. Definitely. <laughs> Landed, Ben Folds on XFM 104.9. 
We've had an email, Rick, from Simon Whitaker. He says, uh, he's throwing the question to Carl. Have you seen the video for that Ben Fold song where there's apparently a monkey working the sound desk and shifting the piano? I'm so, sorry. yeah, you want to check that out? Talking of monkeys, um, working the sound desk. <laughs> um, we've also had a lot of emails directed Smooth. at you. Yeah. A lot of emails directed at you, Carl, asking if you saw this program that was on in the week. The, I, no, I think, I didn't see it. I think I it was know, called so, I know The Strangest, strangest, the strangest village, village in England. Britain. Yeah. Did he watch it? He called me six times during it. <laughs> of he called did. me six times. Erida. Now just explain briefly what this was because I didn't see it. Well, it was, um, uh, a sort of a, an experiment um, for, I think oh, I can work out from the sort of seventies, um, and it it was sort of run by, from what can I make out, mainly sort of German uh, Christians. Right. And um, what it was, it was um, uh, people with various disabilities or mental illnesses, uh, Down syndrome, uh, uh, autism, b bewildered, you know, and and they were living normally in the community. And there was three hundred people in the village. Half um, had some sort of uh, um, problem, mental problem or, or disability, and the other half were sort of carers. And, uh, um, I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was very, very strange. And where is this village? Uh, it's, it's somewhere up, in this village. It's up near Whitby, isn't it? Right. Okay. It. But he called me. Uh, he called me at various points. He was watching that. Uh, and it started off. He, w he went, "Geez, if that's the beginning, what have they got coming up?" <laughs> then there was two fellas, and it, 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 the phone rang, and it went, "What is going on?" And it was two um, blokes who had created their own language, <laughs> okay. and they were going, "What do I do?" And he go, "What do we do?" And what? It, you know, it was an interesting program. Anyway. I love documentary like that. But what made it twice as good was that I knew that Carl was getting confused. Yeah, he was get. There was one bloke that went round interviewing people, and he just have a string of questions, and he go, "Have you had, ever had curly hair? What's your favourite animal? Have you ever seen a badger?" All uh, right, and um, Carl was getting stressed. It was stressing me out because he was trying to think of the answers quickly enough. <laughs> that, yeah, he was sort of saying, you know, uh, do you like? Mosaics and that, and I was like, oh, do it. And, th and the next question was coming in. It was like, it was like Malik's mallet. You know, that sort of <laughs> that word association thing. It was yeah. just, I was stressing yeah. out. But he said he wanted to go there. He actually said, oh, could I go for a holiday there? And I went, well, I, I doubt that. I don't know. Maybe you could go on a a visit. You know, oh, that that would be great, wouldn't it? To for Carl to walk in there. But the thing about it, it would be like, Carl would be the ruler. He'd be the king. It would be that, in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. I mean, he would just die. I don't know. There was some of them were quite clever. Really? Yeah, I don't think he'd- I don't- I, I think he'd probably be average. Yeah. I, don't th I don't think he'd. <laughs> okay, he'd think, I mean, in. No, I don't, I don't think he'd shine. <laughs> yeah. Cause a lot of them were quite good at some things, weren't they? He didn't like the, um, the angry bloke who punched them. There was a, um, this really sort of sweet Down syndrome woman called Nan. And, um, uh, she hadn't hung her coat up, and this angry, um, bloke was going, if you don't hang your coat up, I will. And he punched her, didn't he? Yeah. And yeah, poor yeah. Nan got it in the uh, neck from everyone. There was another woman bullying her, wasn't he? That yeah. Uh, yeah. But he liked the little, um, the the, the 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 little dancing dude fellow with a woolly hat yeah, who was helping right. that woman. If I went there, he's the one who had sort of hunt down and said, come on, let's go for a pint or something. Sure. <laughs> but, uh... Incidentally, do you like mosaics? We didn't establish that. Uh... <laughs> he's still thinking about it. <sighs> what was his name, that one, that you, the, the, that you liked and you wanted to hang around with? What was his name? Uh... uh I can't remember. I can't he was remember good, I liked him, he was nice, wasn't he? Yeah. He yeah. He's the one that fell over, then, and then, um... Proposed marriage to that woman, didn't he? Yeah, I remember. Um, I was on a. I don't know if this is all right to talk about. I mean, it happened, so you know, not. It's all right to talk about. Everything's all right to talk about. But, but, right talk I was, about. but I was on the train, right, uh, coming from Manchester back to London, right. Yeah. And uh, got on it. It was like a Friday night, and it was heaving. You know, like the the, the last train is and all that, and. Um, Absolutely chocker. Right? Yeah. So I'm walking through the carriages, <laughs> thinking, oh, is he in his seats anyway? Is he? Anyway, everyone's like, it's, it's heaving, right? It's people stood up in the doorways, you can't get in the toilet and all that. There's not gonna be any chair knocking about. You know? so walking through, and anyway, I see this one empty chair sort of in front of me, right? I think, oh, why ain't anyone sat there, right? I'll just rush to that, get to that, I'll get myself a seat. Plonk myself down, right? And, uh, sort of, Turn round, you know, see who I'm facing, you know, see who you're sort of having a chat with. Little fella there, right? Little, uh, well, Down syndrome kid. Right? right. Sat there. And, uh, he goes, alright. And I thought, oh. 
Right, not not bad, but do, do you know what I mean? They're always talking, aren't they? They ask a lot of questions. <laughs> right, so I was like, oh, here we go, two and a half hours, and I couldn't get up because the thing is, that's obvious. Sure. Right, so that's that's like mean. I don't, I, I never want to be mean. Do you know what I mean? No. At the end of the day. So um, so anyway, so I think I know. I'll go to sleep. <laughs> Clever. Right, so I shut my eyes, and he leaves me alone, and all that. So uh, so then my phone goes, and I think, right, what do I do? Do I ignore it? <laughs> Or do I open my eyes and see what it is? Anyway, I open my eyes, it's Ricky calling about something. About nothing, probably, actually, thinking about it. It wasn't even worth answering, right? <laughs> so anyway, but I'm awake now, aren't I? So he's like, hello, and I'm like, alright, mate. And he says, uh, he says, you're muscly. Oh, God! And, uh, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, uh, you know, why? <laughs> so I said, no, just, just stand. It was, again, stressing me out, because we're thinking, <laughs> why am I? Why am I muscly? I don't go to the gym. And, you know, I've, I mean, I'm not muscly, I'm in good shape and that. Well. So, uh, so then, uh, he wants an arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cram train from Manchester, so I've got another hour and a half of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when well, so, you talk back, he'd soon have got up and left. If you'd have started asking him questions, he'd have got up and left with a drivel you come out with. So anyway, uh, <sighs> do you know when you're under pressure, you're thinking, well, he's said that I'm muscly, right? right so, do I do it or not? What, and there's people watching, you know, not joining in, not sort of having a laugh and that with me, just, just like, watching but pretending they're not. Oh, God. And I'm God. at one of those table seats, so, it, and he kept saying, come on, I want to arm wrestle. So, and he was getting loud and I thought, oh, I best just have an arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? I best just have an arm wrestle? Well, what do you mean? And, uh, get it over and done with. I had to, uh, he's, if he's gonna keep asking, I had uh, another hour and a half on the train. Oh, God. So anyway. Oh, uh, my God. I'm I thinking who won. Well, I'm, yeah. Well, I thought, were people putting bets on? It How was it working? <laughs> it was stopped and just as well, really. Was it really stopped? No, he, he, was it no, 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 no. He, he sort of, he was, he was winning. I was struggling a bit, right? Yeah. And he was really like, you know, taking my arm down and then he sort of let go and started laughing. And I thought, thank God he let go because I would have made, you know what I mean? If I lost that, <laughs> everyone's in the train looking and all the rest of it. Look at the it's suddenly serious yeah. to him, he's gotta win this. Pilkington, Pilkington. But then he just, uh, then we were chatting about favourite food and that, he liked sausages. <laughs> and I said, you know, he said, do you like sausages? I said, yeah, they're alright, I like a bit of Chinese and that as well. And he was saying, oh, I can't have Chinese, not allowed Chinese. Why? Uh, dunno, he just said, uh, it's not allowed to have it. But, right. uh, but yeah, I had, had a good long chat about, about stuff and that, but. So you enjoyed it in the end? In the end, it was it was all right. Yeah, it's uh, just what do you expect? Mm, okay. No, but it's that thing, isn't it? It's uh, it's always when it, whenever you're faced with something different, yeah. it's always awkward, isn't it? And that's the thing. You're talking about him now, are you? And I, and I I think I, I did all right because everyone else was ignoring him, but yeah. I probably made his day pretty good. Yeah. We were I, nice bloke. I like the idea that that newlywed couple <laughs> are probably thinking that's going to be a similar <laughs> journey down to Cornwall. <laughs> Numbers, forever lost. Uh, I was taken unawares because I was. I opened that um, that thing. What is it? The confectionery. Well, we were sort of doing it ironically, like people getting shameless plugs by giving us stuff. But then I opened it, and it's brilliant. It is brilliant. It's all retro stuff. It's got a curly whirly, a fountain, sherbet fountain. I've just been eating a drumstick that I didn't quite finish in time. It's got yeah. some of those little cola bottles. Uh, that's Hope and Greenwood and their confectionery, which are available mm. now. The perfect summer gift. Perhaps you've got to go to a wedding or a um, barbecue party. We've got some rubbish to give away now, haven't we? We have indeed. Yeah. If only we hadn't opened that, we could have thrown that in the mix. But, I know. Um, no, it's too good to give away. It's time for Rockbusters, uh, the quiz that no one looks forward to, and um, <laughs> we've got, as usual, the bunch of uh, CDs, uh, DVDs, I should say. Which um, just tell me, we have got another copy of Ladder Forty Nine. Ladder Forty Nine's right here. That's Brilliant. in the mix, yeah. How many did they send you? Joaquin Phoenix, John Travolta, Ladder 49, the movie that no one's seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never met anyone who's seen it. But is owned by every single XFM <laughs> listener. <laughs> exactly. Um, also in the mix, uh, as I said before, there we've got Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, right. um, which, um, if you haven't seen that on telly, I'm 
be very surprised. Uh, French and Saunders at the movie, the, uh, the best of all the French and Saunders movie spoofs, which is, I think, on TV every single night. Yeah. Um, it's a very gay giveaway so far, it's isn't a it? Well, this got one, a ladder this 49, the people in uniform, you've got Queen of the Desert and French and Saunders, well, the gays love them. You know how much a fan I am of uh, Chevy Chase, you know I love Chevy Chase. Yeah. Well, uh, we've also got here National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation 2, which doesn't feature Chevy Chase. <laughs> it was so bad, even Chevy wouldn't agree to be in it, so instead Randy Quaid, who plays Cousin Eddie, it's him, right. and on the back I notice it says, Special Appearance by Eric Idle. Brilliant. I mean, let's be honest, if a film's got a special appearance by Eric Idle, <laughs> I know. It's probably not classic, is what do I'm saying. Do you reckon they do, um, Always Walk on the, uh, walk on <laughs> the Bright Side of Life? That's anyway, just... that's just some of the DVDs which you can win. And obviously, the, the real reason you should enter is because you go forward to this big prize draw, um, which is in our last show, where you can win some actual quality. Um, yeah, a, a signed, uh, Matt Groening drawing. And if you can see him drawing that on rickygervais.com, it's uh, totally genuine. It's just there, him actually drawing it in front of your very eyes. Also, um, us, uh, made us, uh, flanimals, um, and a signed, um, uh, poster uh, by Nigel Tufnell. Christopher Guest. Sure. So proper good prizes. Yep. So it's the, this is uh, I think it should be the last one to get into it. Maybe next week, the four that we've got get down to two maybe. And then we get them on the line in the last, uh, what do you think? Well, I'll be honest, I wish we'd thought it through. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I wish we thought this Chris through. Chris Campling, if he's got any ideas <laughs> yeah. to how this show could have run, T, we should have, we should have scripted this. What yeah. we said, we just said the go in a drawer, didn't we? Did we? Oh, yeah, we hadn't thought it through though. Yeah, but we can't keep swapping and changing. Well, well we, we haven't done do it yet. We, we just, we, we can do what we want, yeah. We, we, you know how many BAFTAs we've won? We can do exactly what we want. High five. Well, listen. <laughs> Six. Right, well, let's, let's get down to business, then. Let's <laughs> right, so what, let's just, uh, make, let's explain briefly what this quiz is for those that have only just started listening to the show. Um, basically- It's basically, uh, um, blockbusters. Well, you say that, Rick, but it's not, is it? I mean, that- blockbusters made sense. Yeah, well, there's this thing that, uh, Carl thinks this is a cryptic clue going, right, a fella is walking along and it, oh, look, there's the fish, what does that mean? <laughs> do you no, some, some well, of them, I mean, some of them are hard because they've, they've dug them all out. Some of them are hard because they don't make sense. No, but they've dug them all out because they're going to put them all on the website for people to play along with and they came to me for the answers and some of them are, are pretty tricky. I couldn't answer them. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I love that. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> the only man that can outwit himself. Right so, then. So the first one then. Here we go. Uh, Why don't you borrow some land off Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or Mr. Fletcher? All right. Why don't you borrow a little bit of land? Oh, it's changed already. Already changed. Oh, already oh, changed. Mr. Boardman. Well, no, they do it again. They do it exactly the same each time. Do it again. Uh, why, uh, don't, why, right. don't, why don't you borrow uh, some land off, off Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or Mr. Fletcher if you, if you need a bit of it? <laughs> what's changing? Okay, and what's right. the, what are the initials? Right, LS. LS. LS, that's a band or an artist. Who am I talking about? Hmm? Uh, second one. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, geez. I'm gonna, uh, uh, Sorry, he's got a sweet in his mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those, uh, those seabirds over there. Right? Right? <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those seabirds <laughs> over there. Well, just, just those seabirds, it doesn't matter where they are. I'm gonna annoy them seabirds. I don't know what he's talking about anymore, Steve! <laughs> Honestly! B. B. B is the initial. I love the fact that he was fascinated by the strangest village in Britain, but the stories he's told us about where he comes from, there's him going around with two fellows with big heads, webbed feet, a little pigeon chested bloke, uh, him on his grifter with Maggie pecking at him, his dad in the telephone box nicking groceries and a horse in the house next door. <laughs> I mean, how strange was his upbringing? Yeah. And him hanging from his satchel. To, uh, uh, unbelievable. There's another woman who I remembered. Actually, I'll tell you later. Go on, right. what? what no, 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 I'll tell you, tell you later about another woman who I remembered. What is this? Give us a, give, oh, a, give, a, give, a, give us a teaser. It's just a woman who rode around on a three-wheeled bike with her husband in a basket. <laughs> right, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and, and the final, the you final place. You don't get teasers like that no, on the other radio station. That's the head of a funeral service. Oh. Right, listen. <laughs> <laughs> right, the final clue. Uh, what the Scouse fella said to the robber who he found in his house next to his vineyard. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Again. Right, so what the Scouse fella said. Right, this is gonna be a pronunciation thing. To the robber. He found in his house. Oh God! I've, I've lost his... the will to live. I've lo I've, I, I want to get in that woman's basket on the street. We'll just be driven round. The, the initials. Rest of life. The initials are A W, A W. Who is it? All right. right. Well, Email in and that. Mm. Should we have also on the text 83XFM? You can win um, Christmas, to get to get Christmas Vacation 2 and <laughs> Ladder 49. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's that man?
David Bowie, Watch That Man on XFM 104.9. Now, coming up, Steve, and listeners, I'm, you know, you know, I'm talking to them mainly. I'm not really, I'm talking to you and Carl, really. Yeah. But coming up, an old feature, Knob News. Oh, Knob News. The welcome return of Knob News. Yeah. And, uh, Monkey News is still there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just briefly, um, you don't think you really gave that, uh, Competition justice, did you not handing out the email? No, I just it? quickly was through the questions again. Yeah. John's texted in, by the way. He says, I never get any of the Rockbusters clues. Is this a good or a bad thing? Definitely a good thing. Definitely a good Definitely thing. Definitely a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. All other people do. Well, First yeah. one, why don't you borrow a bit of land off, uh, Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or even Mr. Fletcher? Right. right. L.S. Second one, I'm gonna annoy those seabirds. Right. B. And the last one, what the Scouse fella said to the robber he found in his house next to his vineyard, AW. If you know what they are, yeah. email in or, or uh, text in. Tell us about the woman, what's the text? Quick well, to the text. Well, 83936 on the text. Okay. Ricky.gvace at uk on the email and that. Alright, and that. Mark that one down. Just make a note of that. And that. Right, tell us about this woman. Well, it was just because you were saying about the you know, our, our living. We are broadcasting now, aren't we? This is actually going out, this is live. This isn't us sort of like. Yeah, but you, you were just talking about how I lived in an odd village. Yeah. With kids with big heads and all that, right? And what I wanted to do. What is that again? The, there's two kids with big heads. Yeah, they, they just had sort of big heads and, uh, webbed hands and that. They went to my school. <laughs> and, uh, I, when I spoke to my dad the other day, because I'm going to, I'm going to see my mum and dad tomorrow. Oh yeah. So I said, oh, have, have we got any school, sort of school photographs with the, uh, big-headed kids in? <laughs> and he said, nah, no, nobody bought, bought those sort of school photos, cause, cause they were in it, so it was always a bit ruined. <laughs> but I said, well... <laughs> no! No, he said, he said sales would, you know, cause he obviously talked to other dads and stuff like that, and he just said, oh, no one, no one bought them. But anyway, so... I would uh, love them! Yeah! That's why I'd buy them! Yeah, but I wouldn't stand out, would I? If it's on the mantelpiece. Well, yeah, well, uh, well. Hmm. Um, so, but anyway, so I was talking about, you know. When you say they had big heads, what do you mean? Do they look like someone from Doctor Who? They were just quite, quite big. But they weren't related? No. So why did two blokes with big heads and webbed feet? I lived in a weird area. There was a, was there a, a chemical plant close by. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never told us that before. That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the freaks in your neighbourhood, but no, well, there was, weird, there was loads of weird stuff going on. Uh, there was this, like I said, there was this woman who uh, used to like live in one of the council flats, right? And uh, she had a three-wheeled sort of big. What do you call son. it? <laughs> three-wheeled son. <laughs> he was the weirdest bloke we ever knew. What do you call it? Like a big Tricycle. tricycle, but for a la for an adult rather than one for a kid. It yeah. was a big one. It wasn't a motorbike though. It was a no, no, no. Motorbike. It was a push bike thing. Right. Yeah. And she used to uh, sort of ride down the road. With a fella sat in the basket on the back <laughs> with his like legs dangling over, and they'd be going to like the like the pub and what have you. Was it a different fella each time or the same one? <laughs> yeah, same, same yeah. Little, sort of bald headed fella. So it was in collection for like organs and things. And oh. Bring out your ill. <laughs> and then just people just throw Grandad just in the back and go yeah. right, we're getting four quid for Granddad. But, but, but she's got a lovely pair of testicles on him. They're very low, but they're extremely bring out your dead or nearly dead. <laughs> She used to, uh, pick on her husband quite a lot. They'd be in the pub and what have you, and they'd be sat by themselves, but she'd always be sort of, you know, having a go at him, moaning at him, sort of pushing him about and that. Mm -hmm. So my dad and his mate, right, uh, they went round to their house, knocked on the door, she answered, and he said he, he said he was a copper, right? He said, you know, Detective, uh, Pilkington, gonna come in and have a word. So I'm just gonna make a note of impersonating <laughs> a police officer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but for, for, for the good, he went in and sort of said, now, I've heard, oh, I've, heard, yeah. I've heard, I've heard, you know, you picking on your husband a lot, yeah. we'll be keeping an eye on you, do it again, and, uh, there'll be trouble. And she backed off after that, she That's was alright. And how was the husband? Did, did he, did, was he still in the basket though? Was he allowed to ever sort of like, ride up front with her? Or was he just always no, in the he just, uh, she'd sort of stop picking on him in, in public places and stuff. That's like good. That. Just you to can't, you can't get done, can you, just for doing that? Uh, I think impersonating a police officer Well, you probably did, there, there was no gain. Um, I, I think you can't impersonate a police officer full stop, but I think they'd probably be lenient on him that he was, uh, 
you know. But, but let's, let's face it, it's, you know, he's, he's not gonna be caught because why would anyone know about it? It's not like his son's gonna say it on a, on a radio station, is it? And stitch him right up. Did he, is this something you did generally? Kind of a little bit of like vigilante work? <laughs> <laughs> just whatever, him and his mate, just, you know, if they saw something going on, they go, what can we do? Sure. What little scam can we do or whatever? <laughs> That's fantastic! But, that uh, is brilliant. Right, okay, uh, coming up, Knob News. And Monkey News. And Monkey News. And the answers to Rockbusters. What a show. I'm not sure of what I see. Them by Snoop Doggy Dog and Justin Timberlake and a bunch of other people. Mm. Uh, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Perkins. Sorry, I was just enjoying that um, Hope and Greenwood confectionery. Lovely. I, thought, I wish I had something to uh, wash that down with, Rick. Well, won't you have a, a glass of um, lovely um, uh, Ban Rock Station red wine? Oh, ah, lovely. It's barbecue friendly. Yeah, perfect. Um, good, so just keep sending stuff in. Free, free stuff, please. Free, free stuff. Good stuff. Um, Carl, oh. what are we talking? Oh. What are we doing? I've got something to tell you, actually. Um, you know we tease Steve about, um, not ever spending any money. Careful, I'm careful with money, I'm not- Yeah. Guess what? He's- he's treating it like, um, he's nurturing this, right? I, he keeps running off, right? In the edit, he's having a suit made, and he wants to be just right, because I reckon he's forking out quite a lot. He's having a suit made. Think of that, him. Let me tell you this, though, I don't want you thinking that I'm getting all flash with my cash. Um, it's very hard to buy off the peg when you're six foot seven. So, you know, it was a necessity. Carl, I don't want you thinking that this is the beginning of some new phase. Well, is everything you buy sort of made to measure? Or no, I'm afraid I w if only. If only I could afford it, mate. But, uh, no, I'm off the peg generally, but... So what, assistance. like, properly done and that? Just... Oh, not. yeah, 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 it's the full, it's the full, yeah, it's the full thing. The full works. Gotta keep going back for fittings, they got that little bit of chalk, you know, the pins It's where I had mine made, you know how good I look all the time. <laughs> Did you have to have that, uh, thing done where they say, um, what side do you, uh, do you wear your member? What side do you dress? They don't say what side you wear your member. That would hardly be a euphemism, would it? So they say what side do you dress, sir? It means what ties your little poke, your little, your little John Thomas leans, doesn't it, on a, on rest, usually to the left, isn't it? Your, your little do left you know, testicles. If I said to you now, what side do you wear, Hang on. Do you uh, know? It would be left. It would be the left. That's what it means. If, uh, standing there, right, um, with no nothing restricting it or holding it in or holding it up, right? It sort of leans, the, your one ball is sort of like slightly back and lower, isn't it? And your, your little John Thomas rests there, so it's left. And the reason they ask it is so they don't put the tape measure up on the left and squash your willy or touch your willy. So it's nothing to do with like, well you'll need a bit more room, of sort of more material on that side or? Uh, well no, I don't think they, they compensate, it's just uh, when they put the, w when they stick that up into your groin, they don't want to come in contact with, um, with your The thing is, I, I don't know what side I, I wear stuff on. I just sort of pull my pants up and wh wherever it wants to go that day. But maybe it's not big enough to sort of make any, you know, real decision. But, like now, I'm sat here, right, with my jeans on, I don't know where I am. <laughs> 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 you talk. No, but what, but what I mean is, if a fella said to me, "What side are you, uh, what, you know, what side do you member on?" Member? Go, what is this? What is this? The <laughs> use of the word member suddenly? I'd, I'd go. I'd, I'd, well, I'd, it's not. It's usually not appropriate. And also, I imagine in the old days they had big baggy pants and used to sort of like hang down. And now, you know, like with those stretchy boxers and briefs, it's sort of held up in a nice little, neat little parcel, isn't it? So it's probably not appropriate. It doesn't come in contact with your little snake. So, <laughs> you know. Did you ever, well, have you ever heard that? Have, have you, have, are you telling me a tailor has asked you that and you went, what do you mean, mate? No, no, I've never, uh, I've not really had one made to measure. I had one made when I was a kid, but since then I've sort of bought a suit off the hook. But I've, when, you know, when you were saying about buying a suit, I know that question sort of crops up and I don't know what the answer is. It just annoys me the way every, I don't know, there's no surprises anymore. Do you know what I mean? People know. What, what do you mean? He's gonna, he's gonna go, right, I'm gonna measure you now. Which side shall I measure? Go, well, pop luck, go and have a look. <laughs> right, there you go, oh, you got it. What you chuck me off. Do you mean there's no surprises anymore? What are you talking about? Everything mean... you say is a surprise. Everything no, no, but, you say, but what, every opinion you have no, but what, is a surprise to me. What I mean is, why aren't people just happy just to go, well, pff, depends, doesn't it? Just, I'll just pull the pants up wherever it wants to go, I'm happy. <laughs> what do you mean? Why is this such a big issue? <laughs> But Carl, when they ask you this question, they're not making a note of it somewhere. It's not statistical research <laughs> to find out what the kind of common leaning is. It's just 
It's a question so he doesn't touch it when he's using his tape measure. Well, just be careful. But it- But he is being careful by asking the question. But what's- what's wrong with him touching it anyway if he's- I mean it's only well, like a slight- <laughs> Fair enough. But if he just sort of, you know, knocks it a little bit, you can just go to go. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again? To me, it's the same as the prostate thing. It's just uh, happening all over again. It's but the, the, same. the doctor doesn't go, oh, what, what, what side's your ass on, sir? Trying to avoid the ass. He kn he wants to go, he, he knows where your ass is and he's aiming for it and he wants to get it up there. He's aiming for it for a good cause. This little fella's going, well, I've got to measure his leg. I don't want to touch the knob. I'll just ask him, sir, do you mind uh, telling me where your cock is so I can avoid it? It's a big difference. But like I'm saying to you, I'd have to have a look first. To let him know. <laughs> I don't know where it is now. I don't know, it could be the left, could be the right. Are you telling me you can't, you don't know where your knob is Without now? looking. Well, uh, well you, uh, what do you mean now about looking? How could- Well, you're saying it as if like- Should we have a guess? Well, have I'll a look, have a look and tell us where it is. And what are you wearing? What sort of pants are you wearing? I've got my jeans on. But you've got pants on underneath them? Yeah. What are they, briefs or uh, boxer shorts? Uh, boxer shorts. Boxer shorts. Well, it's probably free, but the jeans are probably stricken it. I probably, it's, uh, I think it's probably uh, either in the middle, resting, dressed in, or just slightly to the left. Have a look and we'll come, we'll tell the, we we'll tell the listeners after the break where, where's Carl's knob? It's a good competition. <gasps> oh, brilliant. We've got to send this to the Sony Awards people. <laughs> <laughs> Run, Snow Patrol on XFM. Well, big question. Where was, uh, Carl's knob? <laughs> That's what people have been hanging on for. <laughs> yeah. Where was it? Well, I can't believe people have been texting in. Hey! <laughs> well, guessing where it is. People saying, uh, is it in the middle? Is it in the left? Uh, it cost them 10p. <laughs> <laughs> it cost them 10p to find out. Just wait, I'm gonna get out the answer. You don't win anything, right? <laughs> right, strike it lucky. Right. Um <laughs> Top, bottom or middle. Right. It's, uh, it was to the left. Oh. Yeah. I went with the right. That's annoying. See, I, I thought it would be to the left. If not, maybe if it was all scrunched up, sitting only that right, it might just pop up to the middle. Just pop <laughs> out. Like, you know. Well, of next of. week we'll uh, we'll be finding out where uh, where's, where yours is. Where's right? where's uh, Ricky's bar? <laughs> Right then, which uh, leads us nicely into knob news. Oh, it's the welcome return of knob news. Right, okay, this is it's very much like the news at ten. This, isn't it? Mm. I do a uh, I do a bong, or in this case a schlong, and uh, he gives me the headlines, the big the big the the knob news of the day. The <laughs> big, uh, where have you collected all this knob news? Was, was, the, was there a lot of knob news this week? It was it was mental this week. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of stuff. The way it works, uh, you you give us the the uh, the bong. Yeah. I'll give you the headline. Okay. Steve decides which story he's going to talk about. And now on XFM. Knob news. Schlong. Man grows knob on his arm. <laughs> <laughs> Schlong. Man gets doctors to make him a second knob. <laughs> Schlong. Turkish prisoners made all in cell wall to produce third inmate. Schlong. <laughs> doctors accidentally remove man's testicles. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, well, can I straight away, away, can I straight away go for the accidental uh, removal of the testicles? Well, it's happened before, I think we've talked about that before. <laughs> well, how did that, oh, what did he go in? For, for a tonsillar, uh, I, uh, what are they called? Tonsillectomy. And he was, he went in the wrong way. What are you talking about? How can they accidentally um, remove his testicles? It says, uh, and, uh, um, he didn't look at his folder, um, and the doctor said to the fella, oh, we've, uh, we've removed your testicles and we want you to take out your prostate gland. So, that's, that's what happened. There, there's, there's the story. This is what I mean, that's why I don't like going to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, doesn't it? Because the, all these sort of, uh, it's when they say things like, oh, it's just, we do loads of these operations. That's when they're not concentrating. Brilliant. Do you know what I mean? When they say it's procedure. That's like uh, be, having a boring job that you do every day when you're not going to be concentrating. I prefer <laughs> them to go, this is a tricky one, this. <laughs> I know what you mean! I sort it's of better. do know what you mean! People, you watch TV programs about like, you know, removing someone's second head or whatever, mm. and it's like the best surgeons from all over the world. It's televised, they can't it's make a mistake. They can't go and retook his legs off by mistake. Whereas the fellow who's having a prostate is like, oh, do you want to do it? I'm sick of doing that. 
Yeah. And they're probably doing a crossword whilst writing it. Of course they? they are. I've seen that actually in, in uh, operating theatres. They're doing a crossword. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. I was just examining some of the other knob news, Rick, a little bit more closely. Mm. Um, man gets doctors to make him a second penis. I'm sure yeah. we're all interested in yeah. what happened there. Yeah. A German who persuaded doctors to give him a second penis has lost his wife after he showed her the result. Uh, biker Michael Gruber lost his original penis in a motorbike accident and doctors built him a second one using a mixture of skin, bone and other tissues. Bone? Apparently, the, pe the penis worked so well that he was even able to father a child with his wife Bianca. But Gruber was still not happy and asked doctors to repeat the operation and build him a better organ, to which they agreed. From his hospital bed, he said, I've got two penises, but no wife. I'm hoping when I get rid of one of the penises, I'll get her back. What do you mean? They, what, they, well, sorry, he had a, so he had two put on. What side does he <laughs> wear? So he's had both. So he's had three then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is probably the thing that happened with Hitler, when he had one ball, but he'd, he had three at one point, didn't he? So he just kept one in the other ball, gave his mum one and got <laughs> the other one. Man grows penis on his arm. I mean, why are people constantly living, losing their penises around the world? I've no idea. But why I on the arm? Realize it was a bit, what do you mean why on the arm? It's just a graft, isn't it? Yeah, but put it on, like, your, your buttock or your, your side. Not, you can't wear a short sleeve shirt. <laughs> <laughs> why do they, they've done that before? I don't understand it. Why not just graph it onto <laughs> the side of your leg or something where it's high up, close to where it should be? I don't know. To get it used to the environment. Like when you were like released a, like a, a duck into the wild. I've never, I've never understood that. If there's a doctor, again, you know, we had a doctor last time, this is someone who can let us know why they put it on the arm. So they can keep an eye on it, presumably. He's not, he's not going to work with this knob on his arm. He's probably in a hospital bed and under, under examination. Right. So it's, what, do you, what do you think? They pop the art and knob on the arm. Say, come back in three weeks. What do you do, by the way? I'm a mechanic. Keep the knob. Keep the long sleeve shirt. Because the bloke's go, why have you got a knob on your arm, mate? What are you talking about? He doesn't go back to normal as a teacher, sir. What? What? What is it? Uh, what is it, Simpkins? You got a knob on your arm. No, don't worry about that. Do your maths. What do you think this bloke's walking around with a big knob coming out of his arm? Why on the arm? So they can keep an eye on it. So it's not- But if he's in bed, just get him to not put any undies on or whatever and just have a little sly look at how, how it's going. Even in hospital, if you're in a shared, like, <laughs> little hospital room, people going, oh, I've had heart, you know, heart problems, what's, what's your problem? He's there with his arm out. <laughs> I got his knob out. Yeah, but I don't think it counts as indecent exposure when they're grafting a knob on your arm. Sticking that <laughs> up the bed. <laughs> Imagine if he's driving, he's just got it out the window. <laughs> People driving by. Is that bloke giving me the finger? <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the end of the man grows penis on his arm story, uh, it says, uh, a Moscow surgeon said the man will, will be able to have sex in a few months. He said, w women will never suspect. <laughs> but you, what kind of a doctor talks like that? Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's this cock now, seriously. We, the birds will never know. He'll be able to go berserk. Yeah. They'll never realise he grew on his arm. That is unbelievable. Will he have a little scar on his arm, do you think? Yeah. I just don't, I don't get it. Like I say, 83936 if, if there's a doctor out there. Or indeed if you've ever a grown Or a tailor. Eight. 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 Making you a shirt. What side do you wear your cock on, sir? To my left arm. What's that? Bit of stones? Yeah, beautiful. Lay it on me. Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. Well, uh, I think, uh, the listening public would have enjoyed knob news there. Oh. So, I, I mean, so you, you, there, was, there was a lot of knob news this week. I was surprised. You know, I would have thought it would be hard sometimes to get knob news together, but- I would uh, have thought it would have been part of a bigger news program, but, I mean, I don't think we'd dedicate a whole, sort of, uh, you know, f like John Craven's news round. Yeah. A whole five <laughs> minutes to <laughs> yeah. knob-related news. Yeah. It was, there was other news, was there, in the week at all? Uh, Carl, it wasn't just yeah. all knob-related, you didn't just research. No, they're the ones that sort of stand out. <laughs> Uh, there was Christ on a crisp. Right, uh, what's that? That's, that's obviously a, a crisp that someone vaguely thinks looks a bit like Robert Powell. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what a load of twaddle, yeah. Uh, there was a bloke who can, uh, blow up balloons using his ears. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, look at him. Just, yeah, uh, well it's, it's, yeah, well it's all connected, isn't it? That's, you know, you're just, you're just redirecting it, aren't you? Pointless though, isn't it? It is pointless. No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sort of downplaying it like it's no big deal, but it is pretty impressive. It's not. When was the last time you blew up a balloon? Oh, I don't know. That's what I mean. <laughs> it's not needed. It's not, it's not impressive. 
That's what I mean. That's why. But you can say that about any form of sort of like bizarre entertainment. I don't, I don't think you have to hang yourself from hooks. But a lot of people go and see Jim Rose Circus. I mean, I wouldn't. I, 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 I don't see the. But would you go and see that? What a man ruins the no. If if it was a mate of mine, I'd go do that thing you can do. I'd you know to 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 a group of new friends. I go all right. Then I'd get on with it. You know, it's it's it it to me it's 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 below um a, uh, an average card trick doing something like that. Apparently though, he does make balloon animals with his penis. So uh, <laughs> which is right. pretty good, isn't it? Up with his ears, so <laughs> it's always a snake. <laughs> so it's not a snake. I go yeah, well done. That's Put a little news. Right, right now listen then. Uh, what about another feature? We'd like doing what song with a story. Okay, he's been working on this, hasn't he? Yeah, he? Has, he's yeah. like a producer, isn't he? Yeah, but with a uh, big round head. Just, just you know, I was saying that you were saying I don't like music, but I'm saying I do if I can hear what they're singing about, and there's a reason to sort of. Listen so, is to it, it. have you turned into fifties dad? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, it's like it's nice to have a song where you go, you know, I can't turn it off because I need to know how it ends. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, it's like a mini, it's like, like a, a mini film. A he can't film. sit through a film unless it's got a grotesque in it. He can watch the Elephant Man because he's getting a glimpse of this. He's waiting to see the bloke's face. That's all he's waiting for, right? And so uh, three minutes is about as much as you can maintain his. Uh, well, uh, well, last week we did uh, Babushka. Yeah. Uh, you know that woman dressing up, mm. come, sort of tricking her husband, and it sort of backfires and that. Mm. Um, don't know it. Ended properly. I don't know if they split up or whatever. But this week, <laughs> this week, there's no follow-up. Kate Bush isn't now penning the the, the sequel. Mm. Right, go on into what's this week? Pinball Wizard. Right. Okay. What's the story there? Um, it's about this sort of deaf, dumb, blind kid. Right. Who's good at pinball? What's that? See, I don't believe he would be good at pinball. But even if he is, it's a lot to give up, isn't it? Just for that. Well, he didn't give it up. No, but it's not like, it's not like, well, you can't even say to him, oh, you know, a lot of bad news and that, but you've got that pinball. It's just a bit, a bit rubbish. I mean, does he even know he's playing pinball? <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's not hard, it's just moving the thing, you know, just hitting the buttons hard. Yeah. It's not like, you know, if he was good at Pac-Man or something, you'd go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but- it Wouldn't scan, would it? <laughs> well, I mean, what, what were they thinking of? What were the who thinking of when they wrote this? Well, let's have a listen to it. But, yeah. you see, now being he's a deaf- He's man wizard! It kinda works. Yeah. He, um, he's deaf, dumb and blind, though. Yeah. That's pretty grim, isn't it? It's rubbish, isn't it? Well, don't say that. I think that's alright, I can't hear you. No, but it is, it is like, it's, it's just the worst, isn't it? I can't imagine what that would be like. It's pointless. I'm being a tapeworm or something, it? it's just- <laughs> No, no, but uh, what I'm saying is what sort of a life is that? It's- it's horrible. It is a bit like being one of those creatures deep in the ocean. Well, look, look, look can I just- can I just answer your questions? It must be terrible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Job done. But would you want a song about it and, you know, is this- is good at pinball? But it's not a real person, which- I mean, well, we, we were getting on to the realms of well, people's disabilities, but he is not a bloke that existed they sang a song about. Well, listen to it anyway. That's well, it's not a true story. I don't need to listen well, let's to have it. A listen. Oh. Pimble Wizard by the Who. A little song with a story there. About a little deaf, dumb, and blind kid. Thoughts, Carl? I just uh, it's depressing. Like I say, uh, I don't know why. Is he enjoying- is he enjoying playing the, the game? I don't know, let's get Pete Townsend on the phone. Carl, what are you talking about? I'm just trying Listen to Listen to the lyrics, right? Deaf, dumb, right kid, he can't hear, uh, no bows and bells, he can't see any flashing lights, he plays by sense of smell. Now, I'm pretty sure that isn't a scientific document Pete Townsend is reading out there when he wrote this song. He's making it up. But I d but the thing is, with all songs or stories, there's got to be a little bit of realism to it. What, do you know what I mean? Why, why, why bother putting money in it? Just let him hit, hit the buttons if he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's a fair point. That is a fair point. That is a fair point. Yep. That is great. Yeah, oh, well, I think you've made Daltrey and Entwistle and the whole crew look fool, like fools. Yeah, they won't get fooled again. Yeah. Oh, um, nice. What are you supposed to do? I mean, I've all... Uh, 
thing, I mean it is horrible, we're not like having a go, this is what I always worry about when we play, but at the end of the day that's what he's singing about, so we're not having a go. No. Well, and he's not a real person, it doesn't really exist. Uh, I say again, it's a fictional person playing pinball and always getting a replay, okay? This what? fella's saying that he's good at pinball, he's played from Sherry to Bowie, but there's this little deaf and blind kid, he can't believe it, he cannot believe it. If you had to lose something, Steve, right? Uh... It wouldn't be money. <laughs> That's <laughs> your sight or your, uh, or your ears? What? That's too much, I can't decide. That's, uh, that's too painful. Sight or your ears? What about, what about you? <laughs> Intuitively it would be hearing, cause I, I couldn't- No, uh, no, I think it's gotta be sight for me. Yeah. Well you're always together, so that's alright. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, is it almost time? Well, I've got to ask Carl, I'm sorry, I've got to ask oh, Carl. Oh, sorry, go on. Carl, Carl, what would you rather be, deaf or blind? It, it when did this question ever really come up? Yeah. When is it, when the doctor goes, well listen, um, you've got our son, well we can operate, we can either lose your eyes or your ears, yeah. it's up for you. This, this is never a decision that has to be made by anyone ever in life. It, but go on then, would it, you rather it, it, be, would you rather uh, be blind or deaf? It depends where you live. Though. I'm not even sure these are PC terms, blind and deaf anymore. Would you rather use your sense of sight or sight of hearing? Depends, what, depends where you live. What, what do you mean it depends you where you live? Well, if, if, if say if, uh, Say if you lived in, like, a barren sort of, you know, Africa or whatever, right? right? Now to see, right? Sure. So, you could lose your, lose your sight. Sure. But, but if, if you lived in a woman's locker room? Well, if you lived in- <laughs> <laughs> Quite, quite noisy. Yeah, it's quite noisy. So you stop banging that door. <laughs> yeah, I'll have my sight. Lose yeah. my hearing. But, yeah. if it, but if you live in, like, New York, low to see, but a little bit noisy. Sure. So- Perfect. That is a brilliant answer. <laughs> Unbelievable, once again. Can we have monkey news? Oh, I this this show's like one long monkey news, isn't oh. it? When you're tuning in to hear Carl Pilkington. I don't know, I'll tell you what, why don't we play a little short track? Right, what was your short playing? track? What? Uh, what is it, Steve? It's Green, it's Green Day. Green Day. Like. A bit of Green Day. We'll cram in the monkey news. We'll play the ads. Justin's here. That'll be that. Right, Go on. That's what we'll do. Right. Mm. You had the time of your life. Green Day on XFM, 104.9, we've got your HC Merchant Carl Pilgrimson. We need the answers quickly, Carl. Rockbusters. Rockbusters. We're running out of time. We've got right. Rockbusters and Monkey News to come in this fun packed show. Give us the clues, give us the answers. Right, the first one was why don't you borrow a little bit of land off uh, Mr. Boardman, yeah. or Mr. Laurel, or yeah. Mr. Fletcher? Go on then. Right, sure. What am I getting out there? The Stand. initials were LS, yeah. right? Yeah. Lease, lease a Stan's field. Right, because you're borrowing it, that's leasing it. It's Stan, Stan Boardman, Stan Laurel. And uh it's a field and that, isn't it? Second one <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those seabirds. That was B. What are you doing when you're annoying a bird? You're bugging it. What's a seabird? A, a, a gull. Buggle. Buggles. Right? Bug gulls. Uh I don't, I don't know where to start, mate. Right, Buggles. don't worry about it, don't worry about it. I don't don't third, know where to start. Uh, uh, if one. we if we had more time <laughs> don't worry. I'd throw him out of a window. <laughs> Right. What what the Scouse fella said to the robber <sighs> he found in his house next to his vineyard. Go on. That then. was A W. Yeah. That was A me wine house. Right. A what? A A me wine house. What? A A me wine house. What do you mean wine house? <laughs> it's a vineyard. It's a cottage in a vineyard. So that's what I was saying. What was the clue again? A me wine house. Well, yeah. But what do you mean? <laughs> What, why is he say, why is it, why is it a robber? Because the robber's getting in and he's, he's sort of saying, hey. But what's the robber got to do with it? Why is it just a normal bloke? I don't say, what, why is he saying, hey, me wine house? Why is because he saying he's, that? Because he's saying to him, hey, get out, can well, no, no, hey, say, no, 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 sorry, her name isn't, hey, get out, me wine house. Her name is, no, her name isn't, hey, get out, me wine house. Gavin Thompson got him all right, he's in Edinburgh, so he's winning ladder 49 and that, that's safe, that's on the way And he's going into the prize draw to win those. Right. Just do, I mean, this better be a good monkey news, Carl, that's all I can say, because that was drivel. Amy Winehouse. Play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! Right, there's this monkey, right? Yeah. And it had been, uh, do you know you hear about monkeys being badly treated and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. So, uh, anyway, it goes into this, this home. It's 14, this monkey, it's called, uh, Matty, right? Goes into this home where it's looked after. What uh, do you mean home? Just like, uh, just a little monkey home, right? Okay, so, so zoo? Yeah, kind of, yeah, but they haven't mm. got any other monkeys there, right? What have they so got there? They've got just other animals and that, but, but not that many monkeys. But anyway, because, mm. because he's there on his own, again, you know- When you say monkey, do you mean a chimpanzee, by the way? Because you usually do. Yeah. 
<laughs> I so, can't believe that um, journalist thought this was scripted. Amazing. So, uh, so anyway, yeah. So he gets he gets sort of pally with the people working there and that, and uh, it's smoking fags. It's having a drink at night and all this. Right? What do you mean it's having a drink at night? How? Huh? It's all here. It's all here, Steve. I mean, we haven't really got time, but well, you know, let's say it's all here, like it's proof. You've got another stupid story that well, someone has put onto the internet. Someone sitting at home in their bedroom mm. has put onto the internet. So he's having a fag. He's drinking a lovely glass of Bang Rock Station. <laughs> Yeah. The wine eaten. that's perfect for a barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's loving life. It's forgetting about its past and everything, right? When this this other monkey comes along. Oh, oh no! That was brilliant. Go on. Right, that comes in. Something said. <laughs> <laughs> right, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. We're ever lost. The magic numbers and the magic number is 104.9. Oh. XFM. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right, two more shows. Two are off air for I don't know how long. Is that two more including this one? Yeah. No, 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 no. Two more after yeah, this one. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, it's right. This, this, this is one and then there's another one. Right, two and more shows. And that's the last one. There's okay, two right. more shows, yeah. Including this Start, one. So we're starting now. Sorry, two, no, two, if I just said this at the end, it might have been ambiguous. But I've said it at the beginning, there's two hours, that's a whole show. Right. So there's two more shows. Two more shows including this one. Yes, okay. well, obviously. So one more show after It's this only one. five past one. After this show, one more. Yeah, one more, yeah. Next week there's one more show, that means two altogether. Oh, no, no, it's only one more show. Good night. Okay. Um. Now, it better be a good one, Carl. Have we got, uh, Rockbusters? Yeah. To Check. win those prizes? Check. Have we got Monkey News? Check. Is it a real Monkey News or is it something that's slightly made Always up is. that you- What? Always is. Let's get Check. Okay. Uh, Knob News? Uh, yeah, we've got a bit of Knob News, yeah. I'm worried that Knob News, because it's only about penises, is a little bit mm -hmm. sexist. Um, have we got any fanny facts? <laughs> <laughs> can we maybe can we sort that out for next week? I don't want to alienate <laughs> our female audience. <laughs> Welcome to Minge London. <laughs> um, good. I'm glad that's that. Well, um, brilliant. Uh, we've got a song with a story. Yeah, doing that. What is it? Uh, I don't want to sort of tell you what it is yet because right. the song isn't that great. Do you know oh, what I mean? Good. It's not a song oh, that, that that that's like an XFM song. But every time I hear it on, say, like Magic or whatever, yeah. I have an argument- 105.4. Yeah. I have an argument with Suzanne that, you know, what I think it's about, and mm. she says, don't be stupid, it's not about that, and I'll say, no, it is. And so we're gonna decide who's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know what song you're talking about, and I don't know what the argument is, but Suzanne's right. Definitely. Well, no doubt about it. Yeah. Well, I'll listen, but I'm hoping that once people sort of listen to it again with my thoughts every well, time Well, this song it, sums up what people should think of you. It's don't believe a word. All right, that's the sort of links I'm capable of. If that was a bag of Sony, then that's <laughs> what. <laughs> then Lizzie, don't believe a word on XFM 104.9. I'm gonna miss this show. It's been good. You might be the only one. No, well, you know, so we're, we're, we're come back again. Yeah, we've got we've got a lot to do over the next few months, but maybe 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 for Christmas or just after. But I still call Carl every day anyway. Oh, sure. Uh, um, today I called him, um, a couple of days ago. Of course you did. And I went, uh, it was the weekend, I went, what are you doing? He went, oh, just in Regent's Park and that. I went, he said, just go for, went, oh, Jesus. I went, what? He went, a caterpillar just fell out of the sky. I went, what? He went, a caterpillar just fell out of the sky. God, it's there, it's wriggling around. I went, I'm sure a bird didn't just drop it. He looked like, went, oh yeah. <laughs> Of course it did. Yeah. For a moment, he thought caterpillars were raining from the sky. I thought I was, I was, I was in chicken licking. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. What? Why did you think a caterpillar had fallen out of the sky? Oh, it just startled me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love Carl being startled. I like the idea of him straight on the phone to Trevor McDonald. Look, Trevor, there's, there's caterpillars, insects falling out of the sky. They're falling out of the sky now. Put it on the news quick. Are you sure there wasn't a bird? Oh, there was a bird. Yeah, sorry, Trev. Bye. <laughs> but it was weird. after like I hung up. Well, I hung up the phone and that from you. I sort of, uh, sat there for a bit watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine him cross-legged, just in front of it. But do you know what? Grass. Because- because of his shape, the shape of his head and his sort of IQ, I bet the caterpillar was thinking, Mama. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Go and, on. And, uh, it was- it was sort of running about all over the place, right, Steve? So the caterpillars have loads of feet and that, don't they? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, they have six legs. They're actually larva of an insect. So they have six legs, but they have little sucker things to hold on to the uh, cabbages and that. No, they've got more than that. They've got. Well, I'm telling you, they have got six true legs. Trust me. Trust me, I'm a scientist. And you were thinking what, Carl? Well, it was. But they've got little. It. They've got little pods. They've got little um, pseudo part legs mm. and little suckers. Yeah. But it was running about like everywhere, right? Mental, but sort of <laughs> running off to the left. And then it sort of went back to where it was, <laughs> then back, you know, went r right and what have you. And I'm just thinking, whoever gave them the legs, right? <laughs> what's the point if they don't know where they're going and that? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you can get imagine about that sentence. Do you hear that? Just, did you hear that sentence? Can we play that <laughs> sentence back? <laughs> no, I don't think we can. Imagine who gave them that legs. Whoever, whoever, whoever gave them them legs. What's the point if they don't know where they're going and that? And that always and that and that, but. But maybe you just, to be fair to the caterpillar, with all its legs, okay, and you know where it's going, it had just been plucked from its house by a bird, shot up into the sky, and then dropped from 80 feet, hitting the ground. Onto the head of a weird, bold shaved monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably concussed. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's one of them things again, though. But I it mean... still knew more about the world than you. How does that make you feel? I just, I just think it's a waste of time having all them feet. It's the same thing as the, uh... <laughs> now it's got feet, feet yeah. now! All, all it has a nightmare uh, behind shoes, doesn't it, Carl? <laughs> all the, uh, what was it, what was it you were saying about leeches and that? Because we were talking about insects. Well, they're not insects. These, they're you know, not insects. What are they? Well, I think they're probably, uh, class, they're probably platy helminth. Probably a, yeah. sort of like a flatworm. Type thing. That's they what you were thinking, was it, Carl? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. I don't know what the phylum is, but there's no. They'd, uh, they'd be. You know, what was uh, the leech? What was an interesting? Well, it's a, there's an experiment uh, um, where you get a maze for a leech, and there's a bit of blood thing, and it learns. It eventually finds its way to the blood. Okay, and then it knows. Okay. And if you, if you put it back to where it starts, it knows where it's straight. It goes straight towards it because it's learnt it. If you liquidise that leech right. and feed it to some leeches who have never done the maze, because of a thing called chemical memory, they find their way straight to the blood. That is extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, it's it's in, it's incredible. We should try that at Hampton Court one weekend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but maybe with some tourists. <laughs> Just blend up some tourists. <laughs> All the people on them, I'll tell you, we would do it. Those people who go on um, Celebrity Love Island. Any of them. They would do anything it. to get yeah. them. They will be liquidised. People <laughs> have enemas. They will do and they wank off pigs. They would do anything to get on yeah. telly. What about that? Be liquidised and fed to a no get get one D celebrity slapper, uh, liquidise her and feed her to another slut. So and see if she can tippers. find her way <laughs> and see if she can find her way to Channel Five. Yeah. What <laughs> a brilliant show, hosted by Jimmy Carr. Of course. That'd be amazing. Kinks, better things on XFM 104.9. Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington. But do you know this, um, we were talking about the leech thing. Sure. Right. You're saying put them in a blender. I'm not saying that. <laughs> well, someone did. Yeah. Why were they doing that in the first place? Do you know what I mean? How did they find out that if you if you put leeches in a blender? I don't know. They probably kept notes. I don't. I don't. I no, don't no, know. no, no. But what what made them? Were they just having a laugh? What what made them go? Uh, uh, was it a party? It was a couple of forty year olds. No, it was a party. It was a couple of research scientists. They'd be given a million pounds, and the boss was coming around to say, "What are you doing?" And they were just making a smoothie, and they went quick. Mister so Yakamoto's come round, throwing some leeches. What are you doing? Just leeching. Just feeding these leeches to some other leeches. <laughs> Alright, well that looks like science, I'm off. <laughs> well, that's what Here's another million pounds yeah, next yeah, year, yeah, yeah, bye! Yeah. That's how they work though, isn't it? I love yeah, these scientists. That's exactly how they work. I'm that's just it. saying they're getting away with murder. Go on. Well, just, just the way they do sort of spend uh, their time. And he can't say anything in front of him because everything's got, everything's, everything's got a point with him. Mm. You can't have a conversation with Carl because he always, he always puts in a curveball. You, you tell him something. And it, 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 the question comes back that you never could have expected. When I told him about that story about the monkey who had run away because he had an argument with his father, he said, what was it about? <laughs> yeah. Now, no one in the world thinks that. <laughs> no one in the world the, the, would ask that question. The leech thing. Do yeah. you know how you said, uh, show, show the leech the way to its better food, whatever it's eating or whatever, yeah. in the maze, right? Yeah. It makes its way, yeah. right? It eats the 
cheese or whatever. Right? Blood. Blood, right. And then, <laughs> then you give it- you give Everything's it, a cartoon yeah. in the car as well, isn't it? Everything is a cartoon. It's a leech with a little hat <laughs> and a little baby bell at one end. But what happens if you got another one and yeah. move the uh, bit of blood, right? Yeah. So, feed those two leeches to one, then what's- is it gonna get confused or- do you know what I mean? Which which way will it go if you've if it's eaten two, two leeches? Yeah. That have done two different ways. Yeah. Is it sort of stressed out? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It probably knows both routes. It probably goes. Well, there's one over here. Oh, there's one over here as well. I'm happy. I've had two for the price of one. Right. And, okay. I'm, and I'm full of leeches. <laughs> then what, what's the best that can happen for? I like, don't. What are you talking about? What do you want? Because out of I'm me? just saying, if they could, if they, if by that, if by doing that, they can go right, we can do this. We're humans. I'd go, oh, what do you mean? What do you what do you mean in the name of Christ? Do what do humans. you mean? All I'm saying is, what's the point in doing it? Think. What What do you mean? If you could do it with humans, I'd say- But well, what, 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 right, Carl, think about what you're saying, man. Yeah, I'm saying- If you could do it with humans, do what with humans? Say if Einstein, right, didn't do all that maths that he did, right? Say if he got to E equals and then he died. Squash right. his brain, eat, give it to someone else, say, right, eat that, and they go, right, it's E equals MC squared, isn't it? What I'm saying is- But they wouldn't, they'd go E equals, oh. Wouldn't they? If it was chemical memory, they'd go, oh, E equals, oh, yeah, same as Einstein said. Yeah, I just ate his brain. What am I saying? What are you, t <laughs> what have you made? Carl, think what you're saying. It's unbelievable. It, 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 the, the thing is, right, you, actually, you, you are what a scientist does. You just keep saying why and what and why and what, but nothing's ever enough for you, which is good. It's, no, it's nice I, to have I, a insatiable. I get annoyed with all the the amount of time and effort that's put into stuff that's useless. What's the next stage to squashing that leech? <laughs> if, if it's not going anywhere, forget it. Work on something else. <laughs> it's the same way in some science magazine I was reading about. <laughs> is there anything smaller than a quantum electron or something? Yeah. It's like if it's not getting in the way, don't worry about it. <laughs> Why are they worrying about things we can't see? Uh, if, you just fed, if, you, if you blended up Carl's brain and fed it to someone, would it make any difference? No, no, they wouldn't would, even notice, would they? Would it would, no. You fed it to a leech, and the leech would go, oh, I don't know what I, I was know. doing, I was, I don't know what, where was I going? I'm even I was, more confused. I don't know. Talking of leeches, did you see the dregs that they put into Big Brother last I've night? I've not been watching it. It's, I mean, it's bad enough anyway, it's a house full of people you wouldn't cross the road. Yeah. To to, uh, to save, yeah, right? Yeah. But there's three. They've put in three more to spice it up a little bit. They they've put in a low esteem model. Sure. Right. They've put in Mr. Bean, who is the whitest man I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a new race. Yeah. He's an easy through, and this thing that looks like Matt Lucas in a bikini. Wow. Unbelievable. The f the fat things on her back, I thought she was coming towards me. Really? It was unbelievable. And the first thing she said, she went in, she looked in the mirror, adjusted herself and went, Oh, me minge! Oh. Oh. Uh, it's, that, that's the level, uh, it's un- Do these people have relatives? Do they have- is there anyone in the world who knows them, claims yeah. to be a friend of theirs? Family. Families. Do they, they have they, family there or the well, family yeah. just- no, have they just moved away? No, no. They're probably their family. They're, like their family are probably quite proud of them because they're on the telly. Ugh. It's probably like uh, saw your daughter last night saying uh, all we binge on the telly. <laughs> yeah, she was on the telly, wasn't she? <laughs> yeah, she was on the telly. <laughs> the, the, what about the bit about all we binge? She got one out immediately. Went, of course, <laughs> got it out, lo lobbed it out. Uh, uh, it's. It, I mean, it's unbelievable. It looks like an experiment. I can't watch it anymore. It's just too much now. These because I I can't relate to those people in the like in the first series. I always remember it was like it seemed like a genuine social experiment. Yeah, exactly. There was intrigue. There was drama. Yeah. It was It was genuinely great hypnotic television. Now it's like putting ants in a jar and shaking. I it. don't. Yeah. I don't know what's. But even now, I I couldn't watch that once a night every week. No, I know. It's just. It's, it is yeah, unbelievable that, that what they're, what people are willing to do now and the time because they've just put in people. I, I mean, it's it, I mean, it's unbelievable. It really is. Unbelievable. You don't you don't care about anyone. But I suppose what what what's good is that you want. You, I think you watch it now because you want one of them to fall over and hurt themselves. Yeah, or just choke on a chicken bone. <laughs> <laughs> and no one else in the house knows the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah, feed him more chicken. <laughs> Send him more roast chicken. So we've got a wonderful celebration for you. <laughs> Pushing the 
senses by feeder on XFM. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Right. All right. How you doing, Carl? I'm all right, yeah. Another yeah. holiday. Well, well, it wasn't holiday. It wasn't holiday. Well, it was. You had, you had five days off work. Why well, isn't it holiday? You had five days not working for a living. You know how many days holiday gets a year now? Twenty-nine. Oh, that's it, more than teachers, isn't it? It makes me sick. It makes me sick. Well, I know the kind of hours you work, Rick. <laughs> it's mad. I mean, if you're not in work by midday, you're furious. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm always- Twenty-nine's normal. For the normal working person. Yeah, but, you know. And anyway, it wasn't a proper holiday. I went to see my mum and dad. It's nice to see them and everything, but it's not holiday, is it? Right. It's not going away. It's not getting on a plane, is it? Going away. Oh, is that definitely a holiday? What happened before 1950? Mm, I don't know. Who used to go- Yeah, exactly. Who used to go to Blackpool or Brighton? That was holiday. Yeah, but I didn't Where did go you to go? Went to Wales. There you go. Lovely holiday. Lovely holiday. Have a holiday in Wales. That's what they say, innit? Have a, come to the Wales and have a holiday. That's what <laughs> they say, innit? But, so, cause come to Wales and meet your parents. Come to Wales and have a lovely holiday. Mm. Well, anyway, it was uh, it was good and that. It's always good to see him. Yeah. It? But um, week off work. Do you know? Do you know? Like my mum likes gnomes and stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, of course she, she does. Uh, She's lived with one for thirty years. <laughs> she said, uh, <laughs> you know, get your dad to take us to this uh, to this park where they've got uh, like. You know, six foot gnomes and stuff, right? <laughs> Have a walk about. <laughs> sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Sounds like a living nightmare. Keep an eye on Carl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway. He stood still for two minutes, someone bought him. <laughs> no, 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 you can't buy him and that. It's like a, it's like a little exhibition thing, yeah. right? And it's part of a hall, right? This big hall that you have to pay to get in, but we didn't want to see the hall, I just wanted to see the gnomes. Of course right? you did, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, my dad says, yeah, well, we can, uh, we can get in there for free. Of course he did. Clever. Right? So, we parked up on this little country lane, right? <laughs> no one about. We How much is it to go in? Like two quid? About three quid each. Yeah. But he said, well, yeah, but if you don't have to pay, do you know what I mean, you enjoy it even more, don't you, when you're walking about and you think, I've got this three quid in my pocket, no one's having it. Yeah. Right? Uh, no, looking over shoulder for a bloke with a peak hat saying, can I see your ticket, please? <laughs> I wouldn't enjoy it more, no. Go on. Yeah, but you don't worry about it, do you? You've got a bit of money now then, Rick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you've changed. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. so we had to walk across about four fields. <laughs> <laughs> For three quid! Right. And, uh, what happened was, uh, uh, we're walking through all these fields and what have you, big grass and muddy bits and all that, because it'd been <laughs> raining, and, uh, climbing over fences and stuff. And we're in this field, right, and I look to me right and there's about... Thirty cows all staring at us, right? And uh, Suzanne started to panic a bit. She said, "This isn't. We shouldn't be here." And Dad says, "Of course we can. We're allowed to go wherever we want. You know, all this land. It's you know, it's ramblers' rights and all that stuff." Yeah, and take uh, take a cow if, cow if you want. So unattended. Uh, <laughs> so, so. Uh, so you might for leaving him in the field unattended. I'm having one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So keep us fed for a week. Yeah. Anyway, these cows start surrounding us. That's around it. Oh, brilliant! Oh no! Face <laughs> off! And Suzanne's panicking, going, "This isn't right. He's gonna. We're, we're not gonna make it to the fence in time. They, 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 they're moving faster than us." And he started sort of running a bit. Wow! And uh, it's like some kind of like, bovine West Side Story. Don't <laughs> a gang of cows <laughs> coming at you. Don't worry about it and stuff. But uh, my dad had to sort of stand there and like wave a stick at him. Of course. And and, uh, and we got away, but. Suzanne was like having a bit of a sweat <laughs> on. got away. And saying, uh, you know, we could have got killed. Sure. And my dad saying, nah, it never happens. And <laughs> I just wondered if, if it does, if, if there's a risk of... Yeah, it's, it is rare, but, um, there's been a couple of cases of being trampled by cows. They're not aggressive, they sort of run through you. Well, they, they're aggressive if they've got a calf. They've uh, had a, a, ca a, a, a what? They had kids with them. Kids, yeah. That's a, that's a goat you're thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they were trying to sneak into the gnome thing, <laughs> and they were worried that like if too many people did it, like, they bought some cows, we can just sneak in. They were cows, trying, yeah. No one's expecting cows. And the cows were going, walk upright like a human. <laughs> Don't walk upright. <laughs> they thought you'd blow their cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, people have been killed by cows before. Yeah, well, yeah. That's, that was like the highlight, and then uh... So when you arrived there, you were presumably covered in mud, looking like something that had just come from Glastonbury, staggering around this, this no, it exhibition. Wasn't, it wasn't that bad, it was just like a, a woods and it had like a, a funny sort of funeral pla- uh, like a graveyard thing. Right. Mm. With bodies sort of hanging out the ground and that, and uh... We had these six foot gnomes. Right. Uh, and then we 
we just set off again, walked back. But we you sure this wasn't a field. dream? No, it was good, it was good. But then, then I got back, right, Steve, and, uh, called up Ricky, I said, right, uh, you know, are you about? Have a chat and that. So he said, oh, I'll just come round, it's a, it's a nice day. Have a drink and what have you. So I got round there at about half past six, right? Uh, go up to his door, knock on his door, right? He stood there with his tackle out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what, what did you make of that? What was wrong with that? What do you mean, what's wrong with Why that? Why were you looking at it? it? Why were you looking at it? I tried not to look at it. <laughs> but again, you're always sort of attracted to it, aren't you? Kind of like... <laughs> I've never been attracted to another man's tackle. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> you can't help but have a, have a little sly look. <laughs> Especially when it's there. When you, when you ring the bell, and I mean the, the one on the door, right? <laughs> and that's, that's hanging out. <laughs> And does he dress to the left or the right? It was to the left, right? Yeah, it was left, yeah. Just pop- just popped out of my shorts. <laughs> or him. Just popped him out of the shorts. Should've so. seen the state of him. <laughs> shorts on, no top, a uh, cigar. <laughs> Looked like someone out of the Sopranos. <laughs> it was a mess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we, then we sat on the balcony drinking wine, didn't we? Did you pop it back in or was it still- Yeah, I, put, I popped it straight back in. I've got the laugh. Sure. I've got the laugh that yeah. I wanted. Yeah. He walked in, he went, mm, it's not that hot. Straight <laughs> away, it's not that hot. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Then, uh, was that knob news or yeah. was there more? No, it's got more knob news. That's just a there. taster. Just a taster. Listen, right. let's play some average, let's play some great music and maybe we should have some early knob news. Early knob news coming up. Once this big dog chased me. Landed by Ben Folds on XFM. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've had a couple of emails, Rick, um, saying that there have been reports of people actually being killed by cows. Yeah. So it is actually quite a lucky escape for Carl and his uh, family. The worrying thing about that is it's tragic and you know, anyone dying uh, unexpectedly, uh, it, it, it's terrible. But the, the, what makes it worse is when it's something like being killed by cows, because mm. there's a slight, I mean, a slight humour aspect. Yeah. Being, uh, are you killed? Killed by a cow? Yeah. Um, you know, like for example, if you were killed by a falling safe. Yeah. The f the vicar might laugh. Yes. That's my worry. Yeah. Well, I read a story in the paper of a man who um fell out of a window and died. He fell out of like he was like a third story window and he fell out. But it was slightly amusing because at the time he was mooning. I know. For a laugh, he was mooning someone and he fell out. I know. So when he when he fell. Like, even though it was tragic, he obviously had his trousers around his ankles and his arse out. I know, the thing, there was a kid who died, got hit by a truck mooning. But the, yeah. you know, the worst thing like that is, it's not funny enough to be killed for. No, Mooning no. isn't funny enough. No, it's just not a good enough gag. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's a, it's a witless sort of thing to do and yeah. then to be killed for it. If you'd just a done a two hour impromptu Eddie Izzard style, you know, yeah. routine and then you got tra I know. tragically killed, that would sort of make sense. But, but doing yeah. something that's a Mooning, little bit- It's almost karmic because it's such a bad joke. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like some weird universal karmic way. It's like if you hadn't been mooning, you maybe wouldn't you wouldn't have got killed. I know. If you hadn't done such a lame joke, Maybe you'd be okay. Yeah, but that's it. The, 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 but know. there's not, yeah, you don't want to be walking along, you know, you don't want to be walking through the garden and, hit, and stand on a rake and it flips up. And it hits you so of, hard. And it's like a boing noise as it yeah, hits and you. Yeah, and it hits you so hard that it kills you. it kills you, you yeah. That, uh, or you fall out of a window and a, and a cactus goes up your bum. You I don't know, want you're that. killed by it's cactus up the heart. I know. <laughs> or <laughs> you're at a concert and a fat woman stage dives. Yeah. And she just Lands squashes you. you. Yeah. Squ how did he die? He was squashed by a big hefty- Mama Cass just jumped on him. Just big <laughs> fat woman squashed him to death. Yeah. So you are. Tell what? you what though, what? right? Uh, talking about fat women. Go on. Um, well, I'm not having a go. What? Well, can you see Michelle McManus on? Uh, oh, man alive! Yeah. Yeah. You are what you eat. What yeah. is she eating? <laughs> Girls allowed. <laughs> Look it out! It was unbelievable. <laughs> no, but to be fair, you know she did. Did you see her in her bikini? Whatever. Yeah. Well, yes, but she was always a little bit. Yeah, but a little bit. Well, no, she eats too much, right? But what I did like about it was that she had a go. You know, she did it's lose her. Hard and that, yeah. Huh? I quite liked her at the end of it, really. Yeah, she she's was not an unpleasant it. woman. She's a lovely woman, but yeah. I mean, mm. like I said before, there was that interview in the Heat magazine where she, you know, I tend to eat eleven packets of Doritos a night. Yeah. Eleven pa- I mean. Yeah. Come on, Michelle. Yeah. That's too much, isn't it? Unless you're trying to win some kind of competition, <laughs> like trying to find some kind of, you know, a golden ticket in one of the packets. There's no yeah. excuse. What could you, what could you possibly be trying to win to but, eat those oh. every day? But she, it's not, it, it wasn't her who annoys me, it's that doctor in it, that woman, she does me head in. Yeah. I can't be doing with her the way, uh, 
she, you know, she's not actually officially a doctor, is no, she? No, and her bedside manner's not very good either. No, it's I like the, the fear tactic that uh, I think you want a little bit and, of. And what does she look like? I mean, she doesn't look like the sort of peak of health. She's no, got that weird sort of witch like crone well, face. It can't I be know. good for you hanging about all that poo all the time. She's always delving into <laughs> that every day. <laughs> I used yeah. to be told, you know, n don't mess about with dog poo because it can make you go blind. Yeah. It's constantly at it. Yeah, I know, yeah. Rubbing through it. And it annoys me the way it's like, you know, well, let's have a look at your poo. Let's see if you're eating the wrong types of food. The person's about 33 stone. Yeah. It's obvious. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't need to look at that. It just whined. And, and I'll tell you the thing that, I mean, I've never had it done anyway, right? But the, uh, the colonic thing. Did Michelle have that? I didn't see it. Yeah, she yeah, had that done. She had and they showing it. She sat there, sort of lying down. She's like, oh. But I don't understand why people have that done anyway. Unless you, unless you are sort of bunged up. Yeah, or you've got a cactus up there. Or, <laughs> yeah. But the other thing is like the way, um, like it's a, a clear tube. Why? Why do you need to? You know what I mean, why do you need to see what's whizzing past? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, like it's some sort of generation game. You've got a, <laughs> Yeah. You've got to remember, you remember everything, then you win a prize. <laughs> why can't you just look at it in the bucket after and go, right, yeah. Well, why look at it at all? Why do you need to look at it? Well, it's- well, Out of it's, interest, isn't it? See what's- see what's come out, I don't know. So, so yeah, that's where that went. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I've been looking for, that. Remote control. Uh, how does it work? I don't want to go into graphic detail, but they- they just send water out there, don't no, they? No, caffeine. Or? Caffeine? Yeah, so it's like a big- it's like a gallon of coffee. Wow. That goes up there, and it wants to come out immediately, obviously. And then it- it percolates. But when did that happen? How did someone sort of go, tell you what you want to do? I think it was on first invented on distraction to win a car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, do I? I suppose they just want, they thought there's stuff up there that's not coming out. It's for, you know, they find things up there. Though, they, they, they did that thing that they find things up there that they swallowed when they were five and that, don't they? Lego yeah. bricks and stuff. Exactly, yeah, marbles. But I mean, meats and things is, can stay in there for, you know, it gets, it gets caught in a little, you know, a little recess in your in your thirty foot of tubing, and um, it uh, it doesn't come out. Talking of meats, I saw an advert on the way in today. Question to both of you: Who eats pepperoni? I don't know. Have you ever eaten a pepperoni? It's uh, uh, disgusting. I do. I've never seen anyone eating a pepperoni. Buying one. I've uh, never heard anyone say delicious pepperoni earlier. I just I I don't associate it. But I know. But with I've, anyone, I've, I've but never seen anyone. When eat you one. think what is it? It's just sort of like. Um, uh, curdled, uh, salt, salty. It's sort of like, um, oh, do you want to try a big long blood bogey? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I won't, no. It lasts forever. Oh, that's scary then. Yeah. You just keep, keep it. Well, it's like keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it under your couch. It, 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 just as nice in a year's time. <laughs> it does look like something you'd find down the back of the oven when you were cleaning out. Oh, One of those know. Gordon Ramsay documentaries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, oh. cause it's, I always associate it's pepperamis and it's the, uh, those nutrition Drinks, which are like a, it's like a, it looks like a, a dog food tin. I think it's just called something like nu nutrition or nutri drink or something. Oh, yeah. And you always see some empty ones on a brick wall near a council estate. Oh right. Uh, which I thought I think the only people who eat them are homeless people. Um, oh I really? Like, I, I, like I, I thought you were saying bodybuilders. No, no, no. It's because you buy these. You can see them in um, in in regular news agents. It's not a bodybuilder. I don't believe thing. I don't believe a homeless who's just got a quid because you runs in and, and buys. Uh, an isotonic and you No, it's, drink. Not, it's not isotonic. No, it's, it's, it's I think it's basically it, if you don't want to eat a meal because you're too high on smack, it'll give you as much as you can possibly need oh. just to keep you alive until your next. Hit. And tell me, Steve, does the special brew do that? Or am I barking up the wrong tree with that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Because they seem to be getting a lot of nutrition from special brew. The, the people who make special brew now, they've just, they've just resigned to the fact that it's only homeless people who are drinking it. It's like, well, <laughs> we may as well just market it chiefly at them. What's, what's the advertising? Takes the edge off when you can't <laughs> find smack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you trying to sleep on Tottenham Court Road? <laughs> 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 oh, God. New Order, World, XFM 104.9 with Gervais, Steve Richard, Carl Pilkington, uh, and it's knob news time. We're all very excited. Now, last week's knob news was what, Carl? Do you remember it was a man who grew a knob on his arm? Sure. No, he didn't grow it there, did he? He put it there. Well, I know that, but, yeah. Just popped it on his arm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Let's to week. recap. Let's just to recap of the week's news. <laughs> right now, it's the headlines. Well, we right talked. Right. To, we talked about it before. Do you know the uh, the little mouse that had an ear on its back? Yeah. Sure. Right. Well, um, he thought he had a bad time. Right. Listen to this one. Mouse walking about, with a, uh, sort of wearing a uh, a monkey's testicle. <laughs> <laughs> They're just having a laugh. <coughs> this is what I mean about a lot of scientists. <laughs> what are they doing? When's that gonna come in handy? <laughs> I don't know what you mean! Well, they were seeing if, um, you know, say if a fella loses one, right? Yeah. Hitler, Hitler or whatever. <laughs> and they go, well, don't worry about it, we can sort you out. Uh, I don't know what the monkey's gonna do. Not if they keep passing them on or whatever. But the, the actual monkey testicle yeah. was put on the mouse. Um, and it worked. It worked for the mouse. But but isn't it? I mean, isn't a, a monkey's testicle quite large in in relation to a mouse? Would it not look like the mouse was on a space hopper or something? Oh yeah, it didn't look good. Well, right. they, didn't put, they didn't put it where its testicles would be. No, they did. They put it. Well, how could it walk then? The ear was on his back, so he could just get about. Well, I don't know. But well, you don't it? know, do you? You just guessed. No, did no. they grow the? T did they grow the monkey's testicles where the mouse well, testicles? Well, it looked stupid anywhere else, though, wasn't it? Oh, whereas a mouse with monkey testicles, that's fine. Oh, I'd, you'd be showing off. You'd be alright. I'd prefer that than the ear. When that mouse gets put <laughs> back in with the other mice, do the other mice go, George, you look different. Have you had anything done? <laughs> but, but, the, but the weird thing is, as well, apparently it still works as a monkey. What? So, like, what are you the, talking about? Like the, you know, the, uh, the sperm and that was, uh, it was still sort of monkey. monkey of course sperm. it was. What, did you t what are you talking about? Well, that's weird. But but what he, Carl? What but what do you? It, it's only a it's only a, a thing to give it nutrients. That's all the thing they're testing. It's like grafting at that level. It, it right. What's your question? Because I'm I'm right. What do you think? It would change eventually. It would have changed into a mouse testicle because it had been hanging round a mouse for so long. No, I thought the actual sperm of it though would be a mouse's. Why? Because it's hang- it's, it's hanging off a mouse. No, but the- but it's- but your sperm is actually created in the testicles. So- so- That's why they, that's why it has to be outside your body, otherwise we put them in a nice little cage. But I'm, ge I'm guessing then that they've done this operation so that they can do it to humans. Yeah? Why would I want a monkey testicle if my kids are gonna be monkeys? What use is it? No, think! That's- that's- no, no. The- the-, the That's what happen anyway, Carl. No, <laughs> yeah, but think. Think of what you're saying. They've grown a monkey testicle on a mouse to see if it would still function as a monkey's testicle, okay? So they can do that to humans. So think, Carl. What they'd do is, they'd grow a human testicle on a mouse and it could still be used as a human testicle. So what? To give you a testicle that you've lost. From a, from a mouse? No, from another person who, who it was kept alive on a mouse. Because it's kept the nutrients alive, as opposed to keeping it in a deep freeze. Maybe bollocks go off after a week. I don't know. Maybe they get accidents. Can you, he had a little a, a card. Do you donate your testicles yet? Yeah, I'll tell you what. No one needs testicles yet. Let's keep them on a mouse. You you have yours ripped off in a, in some sort of bizarre skiing accident. You go well. Uh, you go into you're in a Battersea dog town. <laughs> you pick the ones you want. They can grow them on anything. They can grow them on a dachshund. Bulldogs are growing them usually. Are usually that's where you see a bulldog. Usually that's waiting for a, an operator. What don't you understand, Carl? Hang on a minute. Is what I thought this was knob news, not well, testicle time. I don't yeah, understand why. Yeah, this testicle time's not for another ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. No, it's yeah. all it's all sort of it linked and that though, isn't it? Well, um, sometimes, sometimes it's linked to a mouse. But do you? I mean, what what do you think about like I don't know, testing stuff out like that? Is it worth? Is it worth it? Could, could you not just go straight from? But listen, Carl, I'm getting this information from you. No, it's, it's if this it's was right. on Question Time and someone said there were, you know, Dimbleby and Paxman or whatever said it, I'd think about it as a moral dilemma. You've just said you saw a mouse with a monkey testicle. What do you think of that? I don't think any of it. I don't think anything of it is the answer, Carl, because I can't trust the info. I cannot trust anything that comes out of your mouth. Well, it's, it's true, but it's just all this. It's the same thing, and it? it's the leeches in a blender. It's the fella looking at an electron. Yeah. It's it's the mouse with an ear on its back. Yeah. I don't know what the point is. But you don't read on, because I've <laughs> seen you read some, and you're going, look at that. Man survives on eating knee, and I go, what else? You go, I didn't read on. I didn't read on. You look at the mouse with the ear on the back, and you just think that must be murder at a concert. 
You don't think? <laughs> you don't yeah. think? No, no, I, I just think, is it, is it worth sort of wasting you all think, You think he swallowed someone's ear, he gnawed it away <laughs> and swallowed it and it's just in his system? <laughs> yeah. No, I just get a bit sad about the, the mice and I that. agree, I mean that, that is sad, yeah. I'm um, of course, anything like that is, is awful. But saying that, I remember ages ago, the, the other load of people on, uh, on Oxford Street, don't know if you've seen them where they, they get you to sign stuff. Yeah. And the, the woman got annoyed with me, right, cause she was saying about, uh, you know, drugs with animals, testing them out and stuff yeah. like that, which is bad. Yeah. But, and I was saying, yeah, it's really bad and I was looking at the pictures and that. But I said, what would happen, you know, if, if, if like the drugs, aspirin, and the monkey's got headache, <laughs> is it such a bad thing? <laughs> she got annoyed, didn't want to listen anymore. <laughs> It's a good point though, isn't it? <laughs> At what point is it cruel to test stuff out and things? Yeah. Give it some neurofen. It's happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I bet that here, I bet that mouse had, um, had like, because everything must have been loud. The other, just did the other mice squeaking must have done its head in. Yeah. Oh, that would give Turn him a neurofen. Turn that neurofen. radio down. <laughs> give him a neurofen, please. But listen, are we gonna get, uh, rock busters out of the way quickly? Go on then, Let's quickly. Do it, then. Give us a clue. It's, it's not gonna take long, is it? Right then. Yeah. So, uh, three clues and that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, initials of a band and artist. Yeah. You can win some stuff. Steve yeah. can go through the- It's ladder 49 better be in there. Oh, let me just quickly, uh, It's ladder 49. You get on with those clues and I'll tell you what's happening. And this is the last time, the winner of this- No, we'll do it again next week. Oh, is it? And then there'll be six <laughs> people and we just draw someone out of a hat to win the, the signed Homer, the, yeah. uh, Nigel Tufnell. And the us as flannels. Right, you're ready. But they've got great prizes. They've got Alias. They've got. They have. They've got Alias. They've got the Aviator, a uh, Batman cartoon series, M Night Shyamalan's The Village, uh, atrocious film, and Ladder Forty Nine. There it is. Yeah, yeah, it's in there. Joaquin Phoenix, John Travolta. Their greatest challenge lies in rescuing one of their own. Brilliant. Go right. on, yeah. Carl. Right, the first one then. Uh, when I'm ill, I throw up horse food. When I'm ill. I throw up all food. How can that work? What's going on there? The init initials there, I H, right? It's a band or an artist or a singer, something like that. I H. They're, they're the initials. The clue. I've got it. When I'm ill, I throw up all food, right? I've got it. Right then. Well, don't say anything. Works, doesn't it? No. Mm. <laughs> Second one. Uh, that garden tool. It's not yours. What are you doing with it? Right. Yeah. That garden tool you're messing about with, eh? It's not yours. Yeah. Give it back. Right? What was that? N D. N D. Right? Artist or a band. What's going on there, right? <laughs> Third one. <laughs> that male sheep sounds fed up. Why is he fed up? Right? <laughs> T R. T R's the initials. That male sheep sounds fed up. What's going on? If you know the answers to them three, uh, email in, ricky.gervais. At xfm.co.uk or you can text in 83xfm. Right? Great prizes. You can win yourself a copy of Ladder 49. <laughs> Foo Fighters, best of you on XFM 24.9. Alright, Carl, you calm down now about science. Oh, I'm just, it, it's just does me head in a lot of this stuff. I yeah. think I would have been better off sort of growing up in the 1940s or something. Why? Yeah, well, there isn't as much science going on. People just lived, <laughs> didn't they, for the moment. So you'd, what I mean? you, well, what if you'd had to go to war? What? what Alright, maybe you'd... 1945 then I'd be happier. Just after the war. <laughs> just that bit after the war and before this like what age? What, what, what year would you want to be born? When was the war over? 45. Right. 46 then. But there's there'd be rationing. 46. There's rationing for another 10 years. 56 then. Just but there's a lot of science going on. Oh, in forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, it, it just annoys me all the messing about. They're always messing about with stuff and I sometimes think, is it doing any good? Is what I mean. Um, Mouse with ears, mouse with monkey's testicles. They're messing about with a mammoth now. Go on. Well, they're just saying, well, they're, they're managing to knock one together. 
for the play. Who you just think, some, some scientist somewhere. <laughs> well, and just who, Andy, up. Andy. No, but it's just, uh, do we need, do you know, I mean, we've done it before about the do we need them thing. The amount of creatures and insects and that, that are knocking about. <laughs> You've got that caterpillar that I mentioned walking about, it doesn't know where it's going. Get rid of them. The mammoth. The world's busy enough, it's crowded, it's overcrowded now. How, how much room are they gonna take up? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why are they doing it, Carl? Do you know? You've got- you just- all you know is that they're, they're trying because, to muck around with- Because- they can, because that's all it is, isn't it? Because they can. They're messing about, someone's yeah. being paid to do stuff. What else are we here for? If not to try stuff out? What else are we here for? What do you mean? Well, what are we here for? Just to enjoy life, isn't it? Well, well that's like some scientists enjoy knocking a mammoth together. No, but don't- don't worry about the mammoth. It died out, maybe it died out for a reason. Why didn't Noah say that if it was, if it was important? Cause Noah, that's, that's not, that's, that, uh, that's, what do you mean? Noah's not true, is it? Well, I, I don't know, there might have been some truth in it. What, what truth in it? That he put two of every animal that existed into an ark. How big was this then? Why didn't they eat each other? Yeah, I know, I'm not saying- Imagine the noise, Carl. Yeah. No, trying to get a bit of kit there. There's points to that where I go, that didn't happen, cause where could he have been where there was a hamster and an elephant and a- you know, a, a crocodile. Where was he? Do you know what I mean? But none I, of it's true. What bit do you believe? What do you mean? It got a bit wet. What? What? What are we talking about? The mammoth or the? No, no. What? What is up with you? No, it's just. Oh uh, no! Lot... Seriously, have you got brain damage? No, you, it's just that we had a lot of topics going on there. I just don't know which. You know, no, we were about. talking about Noah. And then you suddenly go, I, I, I know where it was. Where did it be? Down there, down there. What? The mammoth or Noah? What? What you did, none of it's true. What, uh, think of it. Who t uh, oh, God. Think of the first thing. Build an ark. Build. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Can I just, just clarify, what's an ark? It's a, it's a big boat thing. Right. Yeah. I just, I've never had any experience of carpentry. Just history. build a big boat thing. But I don't, I'm not really, I don't make- Just have a go, don't worry, you'll be alright, I'll make right. sure it's alright. Uh, but once I've built that, I mean, yeah. how big should I build it? What am I Very going to big, it needs every animal, two of every animal, let's stop go there. on. Every animal. I'm in mean, the boat building, fair enough. Like, make okay. it, I told you to make it big. Right. Don't worry about the fish, they can swim. Okay, but so what's All the, the birds. Like, get the flightless ones though, they're drown. Get, get the flightless ones, they would, not the penguins, they're flightless but they can swim. But all other animals- I should be writing this down. <laughs> 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 oh. why, why, I mean, wouldn't you have took that opportunity to go right? You know, forget the, uh, you know, whatever. Man, you the jellyfish didn't need to get in it, did it? But, but there's other animals <laughs> where you can We go, don't need to be here. No. Because Carl is actually having a little argument with his own head. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you remember that comic strip, The Numbskulls? <laughs> yeah. Where there's loads of people in there doing different stuff, that he can hear them. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes his own mind puts him off. <laughs> yeah. Like just then, he has an argument with himself and it puts him off. <laughs> right, what's your question? I'm just saying, don't mess about with a mammoth. Whoa! Good. Okay. Well, what a platform! It's good. You know, we've got a radio show, we've got our own radio <laughs> show. People are spending money to advertise it. People are actually bothering to listen. And you, oh. the, what the word, the words of wisdom coming out of your mouth is, "Don't mess around with a mammoth." Brilliant. Great. No, but just just going back to you like, sound just like Bob Galdoff. Oh. oh, I can't be bothered with this. He's trying to say what? What can't you be bothered with? Just because I think I've got a good point. What? Don't mess around with a mama. <laughs> what? Or that's anything. not a point. Don't put your daughter on the stage, missing work. Well, what are you talking about? It's just that I think there's too many animals knocking about. I mean, I know you love your cat and what have you. Waste of time now. What do they do? <laughs> well, they frighten you. Well, yours is mental, though, isn't it? He's sitting there and the cat around behind him. I think they shut himself. Well, your cat is crazy. It does go through. It, it loves. Cause it's got claws, big old claws. Of course they have. It's a cat. Yeah, but no, most cats don't come leaping at your ghoulies every time you sit down. You <laughs> lovely warm hot cup of tea. Aren't they pointless, though, Steve? <laughs> well, I've I've always had a problem with pets generally. The yeah, but pets. cats the most. I, I was saying to Ricky about. I don't know why. Out of all the animals that Dick Whittington could have took with him on his journey. Again. Yeah. Forget the cat. Forget <laughs> it. <laughs> well, okay. Well, okay. Okay. You've got to walk to London because the because the streets are paved with gold. You can take any animal. What do you take? It wouldn't. It wouldn't be a cat because it would keep wandering off. You do double the distance. <laughs> Trying to get it back. Come here. They don't listen to you. It's point. I just can't be dealing with them. I agree. You don't get enough affection back from a cat. Oh. A dog. It loves you. It can't get enough of you. But cats. They're very. They're very snooty. Well, they're cool, aren't they? Cats. They're cool, independent. 
I like dogs as well, I like all animals. What would you take with you? What, if I was Dick Whittington? Yeah. And where is he walking from? <laughs> I don't know, wasn't it Bristol to London or something? I don't know. Uh, Again, it's a bit hazy. <laughs> this isn't well documented. But did it come? I mean, why is he taking a pet and not a mate who? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not interested. <laughs> I try and learn, and you don't help. Album, the Forgotten Arm, it's called She Really Wants You, XFM 104.9, Ricky Trace, Steve Richard, Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Talking about, uh, technology, sometimes being a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, th when you came round the other night, before you came round, I'm sitting there, just at the computer, it's a hot day, wasn't it? I was, as you know, I was in my shorts, I was tucked in, I was, I didn't get them out till you came round, just my own business. Jane got some wax strips, and she went, oh, let me just do your back. I went, no, no, no. Right. I'm not- I haven't got a hairy back. I've got a couple of wispy hairs on my shoulders. Probably about twenty either side. No, don't worry about. It's not like I look one of those people that's like a, a gorilla on the beach. I right? assume your back looks a little bit like Carl's head. Exactly, yeah. Um, and she went, I always do this. I went, no, she put it on the back and she ripped it off. I went, forget it. She went, I've got to do the other side now. I said, forget it. Right? And I- oh god. I let her do the other side. It's ridiculous. It's so painful, and I've hardly got any airs on the back, right? So, uh, it made me think of something that I'd heard about. There's a thing that you can do, and I don't know why, for people who are really hairy backs, and people who are hairy all over, mm. okay, called back, crack, and sack. They do your back, and there's, you know there's some people that do look like little monkeys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. They do your back, they do your ass crack, <laughs> And they do your balls. Oh. In that order. Oh, <laughs> that order. <laughs> again! Always a question that doesn't matter. No, it, it does, because what I'm saying is, is it done from the top all the way down? It's not done in one! What do you think? This is huge 30 foot band aid type thing that you're wrapped in and then pulled. It's done a little bit at a time, isn't it? Right, well, again, it still matters. Which what? order? Because right. if it hurts your back, it's definitely <laughs> going to hurt the sack. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I think. What? What is it called? Back, crack, crack and sack. sack, or sack, crack and back? No, it's called back, crack. I d oh, I don't know. It's probably a marketing person said we've got it in order. You could probably choose which order you want them in. Carl. It's back, crack and sack. Uh, it should be sack, sack, crack, back. Definitely, it should be sold like that. Why? Because, like I say, if you're if you're lying there, look, you've had half of your back done. If yeah. you went, oh, forget it. Yeah. Right. There is no way you're gonna have the sack done. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? No. I would, sorry, I wouldn't have the crack and well, sack I, I done anyway. I don't know why people I'm are not going to have it. a back done. It doesn't need doing. Where are people going where they've got to worry about the, the condition of the sack? <laughs> At what event do you go to and you go, well, I've got to look sharp. I've got, I've got to look the part today. I don't know. The sack done. Nudists? No, because they're about being natural and that, isn't it? Normally they are airy, like that woman on holiday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so the women are, the men aren't. No, I don't know. They, yeah, they all, they all are sort of pretty airy, they believe in just leaving the body as it is. I think, they? I think little gay fellas like, love it, don't they? they don't, why are you looking at me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know! If you're a little gay fella, and you've had it done. Yeah, text just, it. Just text in, what's the text thing? Uh, 83XFM, just text in, you know, tell us, uh, tell us what? I don't know, do we need, is there any information that we're missing? Is it painful? I assume so. Of course it is. Uh, why, yeah, why, 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 did you, why did you get it done? That's, that's the question. Why did you get it done? Yeah, why yeah. is it important to have a hairless arse? <laughs> Cherry and Breaks on XFM. Ricky Gervais, Steve Mitchell, Carl Pilkington. Carl, are we doing your uh, story with the song? Is that what you want to do? Yeah. Well, excited about it. Like last, what was it the other week? We did uh, Babushka. Did Babushka? Yeah. Um, pinball wizard. You said if he's deaf, dumb, and blind, he doesn't even know he's playing pinball, which is. I just <laughs> don't, don't bother putting money in it. That's all I'm saying. Let him play pinball, but don't waste 20p or whatever. <laughs> good point. <laughs> um, this week, right? Do you know I was saying? It is a good point, actually. It is a good point. Again, though, it wasn't a documentary. It was what? just. It's, it's not. Didn't really happen. Yeah. Well, do you know I was saying? Sometimes I listen to song. I, I like a song to be 
obvious what it's saying. Pinball Wizard was a good song. You need a song to be obvious. Uh, in the ghetto, you know, as a kid growing up, and all that rough area, gets killed for nicking cars and messing with guns and that. Uh, mm. living in the city, growing up in New York, rough area, how you cope with it and that, right? Mm. But they've got to be as simple as that. Otherwise, okay. I'm not that. I've happy. got a brand new combine harvester. <laughs> yeah, it's I'll about like the machine. It's brand new. Yeah, it's brand new. But even though it's new, he's willing to lend it out to other people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I mean is, if you start trying to be clever, yeah, the the story's lost on you, isn't it? Yeah. Not 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 necessarily me or Rick, but yeah, sure. Go on, on, on. We, we know what you mean. Go on. On primates, yeah. Well, this <laughs> this song here, right? It's not an XFM song, and you'll probably hate the song to be honest. Go on. What is it? What's the song? Yeah. It's wonderful tonight. Right, Eric Clapton. Okay, it's all right. right. It's a, it's a, bit it's sort, of a sort of bluesy it. sort of ballad from the late seventies. Yeah, it's all right. But I'm always arguing with Suzanne because every time I hear it, I'm getting different pictures in the head. Yeah. Of like what's going on, right? Okay. And I'm convinced it's about like this little cripple fella in a wheelchair, right? And he's knocking about with his wife. Mm. And we don't say cripple anymore, do we, Steve? Did we say cripple? I, I don't think we've said that since um seven years. I think this is seven is when we stopped. Alright. Mm -hmm. Little yeah. just a little fellow in a wheelchair then. Okay. Um and the story is all sort of uh mm. you know how he's how he's being pushed about by his by Again, his wife. No, that's not literally. By his wife, she's wheeling him about, what do you mean? He's wheeling him about, they go to a party, everyone sort of looks round and looks at him. What makes you think what makes you think that he's in a wheelchair? What's the clues? What's the words? There's, there's loads of little things. There's like uh that, well, like I say, uh Something about his wife walking around with me and all that. Well, of course she is. She's pushing him about. But well, no, 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 no. walking around. If someone said, "Oh, she was walking around with me," I'd think they were both walking around. There's a few. Th there's a few. But that's not. No, well, there must be another. <laughs> there must be a reason why you suddenly thought that fella's it's, in a wheelchair. Right. Is my wife's walking around with me? Put on your makeup. No, I feel alright. No, and, 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 and she's always saying, "Do you feel alright?" And that she's always asking him how he is. <laughs> yeah, but she's uh, just just listen. Let me play, right? <laughs> and try and try and picture the scene, right? But now I'm only thinking well, of a little fella well, in a wheelchair. Well, have a listen to it, oh. and, and you know, just just everything that's being said. Okay, understand why I'm thinking what I'm thinking. No, right? never. Yeah, there's no but, clue. But, but the thing is, that's that's what I'm picturing. But that doesn't mean it happened. You picture people that are half man, half moth. It doesn't mean it's possible. Do you know what I mean, Carl? What you what you think is usually not true. Suzanne is totally right. There is no reason. I have never ever thought that Eric Clapton was singing about a little fella in a wheelchair. And the one clue in that there's two, isn't it? Are you all right? Well, let me say that, little cripple. <laughs> right, and uh, uh, I'll give her the car keys. Oh, why is oh, she driving? You got any legs? Pushing him around in that. No, 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 no,
I wonder if it's you're down there with dolphins and you're swimming with them and then they they sort of they they click away they click 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 and they tell you a secret. They, they, you go into like a, they lead you into a cave right but down there it's like it's like being at like Rolling Stones house in the 1970s it's they're like smoking. There, there's drink there's women yeah, they there's bars tell bars them. There's like, um, they're eating tuna. They're loving tuna. They're loving it, but they can speak. They go, "Oh, this clicking stuff. It's nonsense." We're yeah. in a wild time. Then I go berserk, go crazy. It's 24 hours of non-stop debauchery. I think it's spiritual, but isn't never it? mention it to anyone else. It's incredible because you know they're so intelligent, and uh, you know, do you know? Do, do you know about dolphins though? That how, how intelligent they are. Well, people keep saying that, but what, what have they done? You know what I mean? Why? What? What has someone done that they've gone? They spoke. You know, they, uh, I've read a book. By a dolphin or whatever. What what have they done? That makes them so bright. It's the same way they go. You know, oh, they, they look after you, they save you, and that. There's got to be one badden in that bunch. Of course they. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't suggesting they're all flipper. I'm not just they're constantly going round the the oceans trying to save people. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're intelligent. You know. In what way? What do you mean in what way? Well, what do what you, you mean, mean why do- th th because why they pass tests- Why do people they're bright? Because of the things they can achieve and learn like and- Like what? And, well, they can- they can tell shapes, objects, colours. Mm. This- sorry, Carl, I mean they're no match for you. So they're, they're not as clever as you, they're way down there as that. But it's all relative, isn't it? From a- for a non-human, they're doing okay. They're up there with chimps, you know. So what do you want to do before you die? Uh, Anything? Any achievements you want to have? Well, if I'm ill, I'd prefer to go to the doctors than to go with the dolphins. Yeah. Why are you suddenly ill? It's not. They don't. When they say things to do before you die, they don't literally mean the sort of the day before. They mean you croak, <laughs> but you want to experience life. You can do it over the next twenty. Is that years. what you thought you meant? Like literally, is the that what you hours meant? Before, like you a die. priest there going, ah, <gasps> ah, <gasps> oh, give me the lift. <sighs> what is it, Grandad? Dolphins! You know, no fit state, Grandad. Get me in the water! Get me down to Brighton! What do you think that list means? Well, yeah, that. You know, before you die. You're incredible, Carl. Amazing. You're inc- all this time. <laughs> things to do before you die. That's why he doesn't want to do any of them. Didn't you think it was a bit extraordinary that so you had what, to what, swim with dolphins and visit Disneyland well, and climb Mount Kilimanjaro all in the same afternoon? You, that's, that's why I said to you, I would be in no mood for a dip. <laughs> <laughs> What, That's what incredible! Always a new twist on things. Always a new twist on things. But you say about travelling and that, you, uh, you like travelling and stuff, but what- why? Because I've seen and experienced extraordinary things, you know? I went to Kenya once, I met a man who was a, a, a vigilante, he was cleaning up his neighbourhood because the police were too corrupt to do it, carried a sword, and you know, he was extraordinary, just, he, he'd been attacked but he didn't care, he fought them off, he was, he was trying in, the, in this little slum area to try and instill some law and order, he had to arrest his uh, brother-in-law once, it was a fascinating story and he was an it's extraordinary man. I, I went to Manchester and I saw two lads with big heads and webbed feet looking at a house, there was a horse in the living room. I mean, that's well, leave, it. It, leave it then. Listen, I didn't realise it's like seven minutes to, right? Well, come on then. Well, let's do Rockbusters on. Yeah, I? do Rockbusters. And you got Monkey News. Well, we'll see if we got time. No, we got to do Monkey News. Right, listen, listen though, Justin, if if he's out in the office. Oh, look, just quick, do the right, Rockbusters right. answers then. Have you got a winner? No, I don't even know the well, answers. We'll, we'll do I? One. All right then. Uh, the first one. <laughs> oh, right. I just chaos. got the plastic cut. Great. Right, the ahead. first one was when I'm ill. Yeah. I throw up horse food. Right. Yeah. That's the clue. The initials were I H. I got right. this one. And that I must was, say, that, to... that was I sick haze. Because when you're ill, you're sick. What do horses eat? They eat hay. I sick haze. I yeah. sick haze is the answer. You got that. Second one, that garden tool. That, that garden tool you've got. It's not yours. What are you doing with it? Mm. Right. N D. That was different. That was a what? That, a, what's a garden tool? A rake. Right. If it's not yours, what have you done? You've, you've nicked it. You've nicked Nick Nick Drake. You've nicked. You've nicked that rake, Nick Drake, Nick Rake, right? So that's ND. So you got that. I don't know where that's, that's, fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. The third one, that male sheep sounds well fed up. Go on. What's up with it? That was TR. Yeah. That was uh, that was that ram, ram. It's a ram. That's a male sheep. It's it's fed up. It's moaning. Ram moans. Ram owns the Ramones. So they got that as well. well. Let's give it to Jenny McKean from Isle of Wight because she's got all three of those answers. And uh, right, straight into monkey news. It better be. Oh, no, let's play a record. Let's no, no. Play a record we've got to monkeys. do monkey news. We it's only five minutes to go. We've what? got time for a record and then some monkey yeah. news, surely. Oh, X bit of XTC. Oh. Mm. 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 Making 
pants for Nigel XTC. Okay, uh, let's play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right, this, uh, this happened in, uh, Pittsburgh, right? Uh, there was a rock band and, uh, they sort of, they've got this studio in, in Pittsburgh and what have you. Mm. And they're laying down tracks and stuff like that. And in the, in the studio that they use, right, there's this, uh, this monkey works there. Right, so <laughs> I love the way he throws that in. Like, cool, like, cool. like, he throws that in, this monkey works there. No, it's just got a little gig there, he sort of, uh, it, it carries the equipment in, guitars. <laughs> <and all laughs> he doesn't! He does. Uh, no, he doesn't. He just sort of cleans up after the band. No, right? he doesn't. Emptying the ashtrays. Doesn't that happen. Stuff. It doesn't does. happen. That's, that's the gig it's got. Anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> Gets women out of the crowd that they want to, uh, <laughs> go with, it with. with one arm. <laughs> it back. So anyway, right? So the, the band's in the studio, yeah. right? And, uh, one of the band members brings some A&R fella to the studio to have a listen to the latest track, right? Yeah. So they hit play and, uh, you know, they're all there going, yeah, brilliant, this is good. Oh, no. Anyway. So the fella says, yeah, I like the track. I, uh, especially like the, the bass on it. Right? <laughs> right, it's cause this is bullshit. So, This uh, is rubbish. So, so- And they haven't laid down a bass So, track? so, so this is- have you heard it? So <laughs> the, know, the, Carl, the, the please thing don't is, do right, this to so me. So the A&R fella goes, and yeah. it's like, uh, it, the band members are stood about and they're going, that's good that you liked it. And I'm saying, yeah, but what's he on about with the bass? So no, this is rubbish. This is absolute rubbish. Where did you get this from? Please, because we never Where get to the end. Let's hear this it. is absolute so, nonsense. So they played it back. Yeah, right? and it's the chimp playing bass. It's so, definitely not. So they were like, that's weird. We haven't got a bassist anyway. So they go, well, whatever, right? So we haven't leave. got a bassist. <laughs> so they so, go, whatever. Let's go. Oh, home. forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ben Folds. We've landed on XM 9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and little Carl Pilkington, and his magical little manky round baldy head. He was described as a um, wacky mank in uh, one of the papers this week. Really? Brilliant. Well, remember we were talking about it last week about he came round to my house and uh, I popped out my uh, um, Mr. Johnson. Sure. Which I'd take a little look at. And his two that made the papers. That right. made the papers. Wow. What what paper? It wasn't it wasn't front page of the Times. It must have been like the Daily Star <laughs> or something. <laughs> Just squeeze live eight. Yeah, in the yeah, second, yeah, yeah. On the second page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, wacky mank. Wacky mank. That's wacky great. Wacky mank. Wacky mank. We had an email from someone who reckons they remember you from uh, body popping uh, round Salford Way. Yeah, Eccles Precinct apparently. You like, know that? Yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't doing it round there though. What? What do you mean? I was round Stratford. Stratford Arndale. And what were you doing? What sort of body popping was it? Just a bit of everything. Caterpillar. <laughs> uh, bit of moonwalking. Do you have a little piece of line there you used to carry around? Well, mates had that. Right, you Spoiled didn't bother theirs. Spoiled theirs. Spoiled theirs. Were you any good? Uh, but you weren't break dancing, were you? You weren't spinning on your head and stuff, you were more body popping. Well, I hope you weren't spinning on his head, cause you know that can sort of do- it can give you little brain damage and things. Well, it can give you brain damage. Also, it can wear your, um, head down and also makes your head perfectly round. Yeah. Because gravity is pulling but on But if all. you keep on doing it, obviously it's gonna wear your hair- Hair out, yeah. So you- so you become a, a sort of like a- Stupid. Uh, stupid, bald, and roundy yeah. headed. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, very I very cool. much doubt that you did do any of that, yeah. did you, Carl? Didn't do any of that. Uh, well. So you're shooting off in a minute, aren't you? Well, yes, cause we were trying to make poverty history, Carl. Yeah. People are making poverty history all over the place. They're putting on a wristband. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be working. Because I haven't been poor for ages. <laughs> I haven't been poor. And, the, and Alex had a, um, a stop bullying. Alex was wearing a stop bullying uh, wristband and as he himself said, he, he, he seems to have sorted that out. You haven't been bullied I for ages. I haven't been bullied for years. So wristbands, wristbands work. I saw so one um, in a shop window the other day which said, um, stop child abuse. And I bought one, obviously, because, um, a lot of people say, you know, does it make a difference, but it was only a quid and I'd only spent it on kiddie porn. <laughs> so, you know, I think I've made a little difference there, in a small way. On a serious note, though, I like the idea that, that, just stop child abuse. You, you, you're a paedophile and you're walking along the street in your Mac, right, you've got a puppy in one hand, a bag of sweets in the other, and you see this wristband and you go, oh, stop it. Oh, okay then. Yeah, I All right. thought before, that's All what right, I think. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. well, I won't be doing that again. Yeah, he was hanging around in Top Shop <laughs> for unsavory reasons. <laughs> he saw them in there for only a quid. Carl, we haven't got long, have we? We've got an hour and a half because we've got to shoot off. I've got to shoot off down to Live 8 and then um, uh, introduce Rem. 
Um, so, uh, we've got a lot to pack in. We've got the Rockbusters, and then we give away- I just saw those, um, I'll finish the sentence in a minute. I look forward to it. I'm getting excited. <laughs> I'm getting excited. So we've got so much to pack in. Yeah. I haven't got time to finish all my- So listen, <laughs> right? Do you know the things we're giving away? The signed little Homer, um, the Nigel Tufnell thing and the Flanimals, right? It looks brilliant. They've done a brilliant job, the people here at XFM. So take back all you were saying about them. Carl. <laughs> and nice. also we should say as well, you've still got a chance to win that because if you get today's Rockbusters, you go straight into the hat for yeah. the big draw, so you've still got a chance to win all those top prizes. Uh, Play a record. Bit of monkeys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> monkeys. Pleasant Valley Sunday. Alright, do you like that Carl? It's alright, yeah. What's it about? <laughs> Well, if you heard, it was a sort of, uh, description of, you know, typical suburbia, isn't it? Here in status symbol land. You know, it's a sly dig. The monk- when the monkeys get a bee in their bonnet about something- Oh. You better not- You, you do not want to be on the receiving <laughs> end of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've, got, uh, we've got a, uh, good song with a story later. Go on, what have we got? Up. Uh, don't want to tell you yet. Alright. Now, is it as, um, pitiful as last week's where you somehow misheard um, that Eric Clapton song. What was the Eric Clapton song? Well, it, wonderful tonight, and he was convinced it was about a bloke in a wheelchair for no reason, no mm. evidence at all, mm. other than she's walking around with me. Yeah. Well, yeah, walking around with me. No, no. I, I walk mean, into a room and everyone's head turns yeah. to look at her, which she didn't seem to. Helps him to bed. <laughs> Is he drunk? Mm. He's had a few. Oh, uh, never mind. Yeah, well, you're totally wrong. Big day, Carl, though, isn't it? No, there's, cause he, you know, there's lots going on, and I know Carl's very, it's very, very important for him that he, he champions live eight. I don't know what's going on. I, d I don't know what. I, I am sick of it, to be honest. <laughs> sick of what? Just sick of reading about it. Sick of this live eight thing. Sick of it all. Brilliant. Fed up with it. What, what annoys Live you particularly? It. It's not only that today, though, is it? Um, on the way in today, right? Saw a gay fella. <laughs> On a bike, on a bike, rushing. What time did the gay march start? What what time did it have to be? Why are you looking at me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was he was rushing. Left it late, so he'd had a late night again. So my point's <laughs> right about them. Well, right. what, was, what was your point about? Just to people who just uh, tuned in. Well, the fact that they they go out late, so you know they they sort of have a nice night out from about half past eleven. <laughs> They're lying in the jeans at like. Lying <laughs> <laughs> in their jeans. <laughs> they leather trousers. But anyway, right? So they're cutting the back. Are they leather trousers <laughs> <laughs> about half <laughs> ten at night? I'm on the way in, right? And I see one stressed out, rushing, right, on a yeah. racer, yeah. wearing high heels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. He's fifty his dad, isn't he? <laughs> he's got- he's angry. He's just angry. If you're a gay fella and you're, um, you're proud to be gay, but you also want to make poverty history, you don't know what to do today, do you? You're all racing all over the place. Uh, it's been murdered. It seems a bit unfortunate that they've put them on the same day. Yeah. Well, you can, get, you can get little, um, little leather studded, uh, wristbands <laughs> that say <laughs> make poverty history. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you can- you can- you can join in you on can, both parts. You part. can kill two birds at once, though. Yeah. yeah. But why is Live Eight stressing you out? It's for a good cause. You must have, um, you know, we, I know we've discussed this in the past and you don't really know what you're talking about, but. I mean, may maybe that's the problem. I'm just, uh, I don't know. I mean, I could, I could have told them ages ago that there was no way that they were going to pay it back. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I love that. But they didn't consult you, did they? When they were handing out this money willy nilly to people who were dying, you could have had a quiet word with them. You all, all I'm saying is. You could have said to Harold Wilson, Harold. They're not, not going to get this back, mate. Obvious. You are not going to get this Obvious. back, mate. When I wanted a mortgage, I had to supply three wage slips. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> I was double checked out loads of times. <laughs> well, I'd like to see. Um, have you ever seen that guy Alvin Hall, who gives financial advice to perhaps teenagers who don't know how to spend their money wisely? All right. Perhaps like to send him over. There. He's a guy with the, the bow tie. Oh yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, yeah. I'd send him over there and just sort of have a chat with him and say, yeah, uh, yeah make a, make a list of what you're so, spending it on. So he's basically. Are you, are you, will you be annoyed if they drop all debt and double aid and everything? No, no, because I mean, you know, people sometimes need help and that, don't they? You've got to help people out, but yeah. it's, it's, it's how many times is the thing. You know what I mean? Let them off. But, but do I, uh, you know, I, I've got this, uh, monthly payment at the moment, haven't I? Yeah. I'm paying for tools for people out there who need right. a drill to build a house or whatever. Yeah. Am I now in my right to say, well, you can't have it all. Do you want the drill or do you want the debt cancelled? 
This is what I'm saying. Okay. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm all happy to help people out. Do you think, do you think they're taking us for a match? Is that what you think you might well, be taking? We'll, we'll see, won't we? Time will tell, won't we? I mean, if, if next year, at the same time, Geldof's putting on another gig, I'll go, what's going on now? <laughs> <laughs> Geldof putting on another gig of the mean fiddler. What's going on now? I but, think you're missing out on the true meaning of today, Carl, which is an opportunity to see Keen for free. I think that's the problem. No, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go. I don't like crowds and that, do I? Right. I'm dealing with that. I don't like big crowds. People, because I was talking to people at work about it and they were saying, oh, you know, it's a big occasion, it's one of them events, like, you've got to be down there because in years to come, when they say, you know, we are there, I don't see what's good about having a memory being stuck in a crowd of 150,000 people. I prefer to uh, do something nice, say if I, if I have like a nice cake and a cup of tea, right? <laughs> In years to come, when when they go, do you remember that day when we were all cramped and what have you? I go, no, I was on a nice cake and a cup of tea. <laughs> so I've got a nice, nicer memory than them. <laughs> so I believe in doing something nice on a big occasion. Do you know what I mean? On a special day, do yeah. something nice. Remember that. The thing is, you have got a nicer memory than them because when you look back and I say what you're doing 20 years ago, your memory will tell you you were actually having a um, cup of tea and a cake, but with a chimpanzee who could talk English. That's what your memory will tell you. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, I was, I was out with my mate. I was out with my mate Marty. He's a chimp, and it just you're, you'll be in cuckoo land by the time you're 50. You'll be just what going. Oh, it was great that day. I remember, Suzanne. Suzanne, I don't know what I'm talking to Suzanne, she's left ya. She's left ya, she's, she's had enough of you waking well, up. Well, she's going. down in Hyde Park watching Bed Shaped live. <laughs> <laughs> she's not worried about cake and a cup of tea. Have you ever done a march or anything though? Have you ever sort of- What are you saying? Have you ever, have you, you know, you're having a go at me for not getting behind it all, right? Which I am because I've got more standing orders going out of my account for charities than anything, yeah. right? But are you, have you ever got behind a, 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 you know, a problem? No. I don't think I have to be fair, no, no. No, I am quite slack in that respect. It does take a lot of effort though, doesn't it? Well, it depends. What sort? Well, you yeah, know, if you're gonna do one of those walks from John O'Groats to Land's End or something, that's a lot of time commitment. There's one, I tell you what, there is one that's, that looks alright. On, um, Portland Place, just off Oxford Street, there's always, uh, just a little Chinese fella sat on the pavement, right? Oh, I've seen him, yeah. What's that all about? Yeah. He's just sat there with a poster, but you don't know what it's for because it's in Chinese. Yeah. So he's just, he's just always sat there. But that's a nice, that's, for me, that's the sort of march I want where you just, and he's only there when it's sunny, if it's raining they don't bother. I tell a lie, I did pop down when all those women walked through London in their bras. <laughs> <laughs> And gravity on XFM 104.9. We've uh, had a couple of texts. People obviously can text in 83XFM. That's the um, text number for the uh, big quiz that's coming up shortly. Rockbuster, still your opportunity to win some of those cracking prizes. Enter your name in the draw if you can um, unravel the, I don't know what you call them, conundrums that uh, yeah, Carl set. Sort of. We've had a couple of texts. Um, obviously, we're leaving early today. This is a, sh a shortened show and our last show of this run. But we've got to leave early. We've got to go down and try and make poverty history. Um, but Rob's texted and he says, only an hour and a half today. Well, poverty does have some benefits then. <laughs> uh, He's a fan. He understands the show. Who was that little fellow that used to, uh, write in who hated the I show? Know, I forget his name, eh? And I haven't heard from him from a while, for a while, actually. I don't know what happened. No. Maybe you realise that if you hate the show so much, the obvious thing to do was to switch off. Maybe that finally does. That's annoying. Him. What's got, his name? Someone remind us of his I name. I like people who hate us to carry on listening. Yeah. It just gives it an edge, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, It's the fact that, you know, some, that you're annoying someone. I mean, I love annoying people. I know you do. I know so you're, you're like a kind of walking Chinese water torture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, have we got Ladder 49 today? Rick, there's a number of cracking DVDs as ever on Rockbusters. Um, we've got The Life Aquatic mm. with Bill Murray, we've got Howard and uh, Kumar Get the Munchies, <laughs> hilarious stoner comedy, and uh, Batman the Animated Series. And Ladder 49, there it oh, is. Oh, Phoenix, yes. John Travolta. If you're interested, if you've ever seen Ladder 49, then you can give us a quick text review on uh, 83XM. I'd be interested to know if, in, if it's Why actually worth watching. Why are you giving away one a week for the last <laughs> six weeks? Yeah. Well, we better start then. Let's do Rockbusters for the last time. You can win those amazing prizes. All right. Um, as always, just a little cryptic clue. Some initials of a band or an artist. Work it out, email in or text in. That's it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, the first one. Uh, Richard Kid, uh, Richard's kid. Yeah. Cuts hair for a living. Right? Richard's kid cuts hair for a living. All right. 
initials B D, right? B D. Richard, uh, R Richard's kid cuts hair for a living. Second one. I have a problem saying the French word for well. Right? I think I think that's that's the right word anyway. Well. I have a problem saying the French word for well. So what's that? that initial there is K. Right, band or artist. And then uh, the third one. You take eight kebabs, two kebabs, fifty-seven kebabs, times it by twenty-seven kebabs. Right, the fella is struggling to work it out. What's 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 that? What's going on there? Right, it's <laughs> a good question. D S, D S is the answer there. Eight kebabs, two kebabs. I've got it. Fifty-seven kebabs times it by twenty-seven or what have you. Fella's struggling working it out. What yeah, is I've it? I've got that one. D S. So, uh, just email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk or on the text 83936. Yeah. Yeah, and you can win, uh, Ladder 49 and those other DVDs. Plus, you go into the draw, which we'll do before we leave, and you can win the, uh, signed by Matt Groening, personally drawn at Homer Simpson. We've got the Spinal Tap poster signed by, uh, Christopher Guest. And, uh, and also the, the original, um, artwork of us. Uh, as flannimals. But they've all been framed. They've done a brilliant job. It really is, it really is a nice prize. O I mean, almost too go good to give away. A little bit annoying. Is it too late to take that back? Well, I was thinking we could sneak in a, a copy. Yeah. Just a very bad photocopy, <laughs> so it goes grey and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, they're all originals, so, uh, g keep, get texting. Alright. Alright. <laughs> Night Swimming, beautiful song, brilliant band. I've got to introduce them and I'm actually nervous. Yeah. I never get nervous. You never get nervous, do I you? I never get nervous and I get a little adrenaline rush. It just takes, what is it, 80% of the world's population to be watching <laughs> you. And then you get a little bit jittery. And I don't know what to wear. No. No, this is interesting actually. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, uh, I, for a moment though, I was thinking maybe Ricky's got to pop home first before he goes down. <laughs> To bring on the band, but if you are watching it or if you're there, obviously not there. If you were there, you wouldn't be listening to this. But if you're watching it on TV, do check Ricky out because how would you describe that particular look? Ricky's wearing uh, sweatpants. I assume they're sweatpants. They're not pajama bottoms, are they? They're, yeah, they're so sweatpants. They're sort of. And yeah. you've got just a white t-shirt, cheap and plain white t-shirt. Yeah. And it basically Ricky is wearing. <laughs> it's like he's made so little effort. The only the, he could have made the only reason he, the only way he could have made less effort was if he wasn't wearing any clothes. <laughs> if he was just wearing his underpants that he slept in. <laughs> But he's actually bothered to spot on a t-shirt and a pair of sweatpants and some trainers. Yeah, well. I mean, what, Ro Jonathan Ross is gonna probably be wearing a suit, one of his, you know, expensive suits or yeah. whatever and- Yeah, but he won't be as comfortable as me. Well, true. <laughs> Did it not occur to you for a moment to maybe make slightly more of an effort? Perhaps put on a jacket? <laughs> a jacket would look silly with tracksuit bombs. Well, again, you could have changed the tracksuit bottoms. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they're a mainstay <laughs> of the outfit, are they? It's like, they're not changing <laughs> for anything. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've got very little things that uh, I haven't got a drawstring or elasticated waistband. No, sure. I don't really don't want to be bothering with buttons and zips and hooks. There's gonna come a point, isn't there, where you're just gonna wear, I don't know, smocks. <laughs> baby grow. Baby grow. Baby yeah. grow with a flap. Yeah. That'd be great, yeah. wouldn't it? Those little mittens. <laughs> yeah, all in, yeah, they'd be great. <laughs> the, the, the oven gloves, so I can just get stuff out of the oven, eat it, let it drop everywhere. Yeah. Right, and then just get out of the baby grow, put a new one on, a clean one on. All those kind of, those kind of red <laughs> flannel things with the, 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 which cowboys wear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With the kind of buttoned up. Yeah, the, 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 the old cowboys. Yeah. Grandpa, he comes out with the shotgun. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the long johns. Well, um, yeah. how's it going with Rockbusters? Has anyone got the answers? Um, Actually, one yet. guy is, uh, he t texted in, he, uh, James in Deptford, he's, uh, offered some answers, and he says here, the guy that hated us, famously, of course, we should have remembered, Dickie Anderson. Dickie Anderson? Richard Anderson, of course. Um, oh. I, don't know, I, I don't know if Dickie's still listening, if he is, obviously email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk <laughs> and, uh, tell us what you've been doing, what, how you've been keeping busy and stuff. Yeah. Nice to hear from him. Chris Campling hasn't called, has he, either? No, oh, Campling. The one that thinks that not only is this whole show scripted, imagine <laughs> that, right? But that Carl is a character created by us. Yeah. He's actually an actor. Oh, if only Look at that. Credit for a that. shaved monkey we got. I tell you, you're gonna go along later to the Live 8 gig and you're probably gonna see some bands that can make an effort to entertain you, but oh, if you want entertainment, Rick, you know it. Go on. There's only one person to book. Go on. Me. If, if you, you know, perhaps yeah. I'm gonna do, um, uh, uh, cause I mean, I'm, I mean, obviously a top well, DJ I, I, on the radio, but 
where my where I really come into my own is DJing in any kind of club environment. Well, you told me you do a DJing. Uh, I didn't go to it. Uh, DJing a, a party, and you said the place was rocking. The place was roaring, and I loved it. Uh, Carl just just said he was there, and they weren't. Well, that's nonsense, Carl. They because you know very well that when I was put I put on a tune, they cheer. Yeah, but it, it was late on in the night. They would have done that whatever you put on. That's nonsense. No, they, they, they were happy and everything. I'm not saying they were having a good time. It was your party. It was it was all right, but they weren't going mental like you're you're sort of making up. They were definitely going mental. Yeah, when I, I put on the know. proclaimers, they could not believe their luck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they they would have walked a thousand miles. <laughs> was it good though? Was he? Were they really? What were they doing? Were they dancing? They were dancing, were they? Just dancing and that, but they weren't sort of cheering, going you know more and all that at the end. What's about? Oh, Take wow. on me came on. They, they, the big, the big cheer went up. Oh, I don't know to believe. I've been there, done it, Steve. I've, I've been the DJ as well. Oh, know. it might be jealousy. It I might think be like professional a, jealousy there. Like a, yeah. I think it's because my fortunes are on the up and his are on the down. You know, we all know famously that he had uh, a music, music didn't his happen. DJ outfit. Didn't happen. Did, didn't. I did enough. I just wanted to do enough to pay for the equipment, and I did. And that was that. But I don't like crowds, do I? <laughs> But you're safe, aren't you? You're behind the little thing with the yeah, flashing lights. Yeah, but I don't, still a lot of people and that. Forced fun. Don't like that. Forced it's fun. It's not forced fun. They haven't got to dance if they don't want to dance. Yeah. Don't like it. What do you mean your fortunes are on the app anyway, DJ? Where well, I'll tell you, I was uh, hired, well, I say hired, I did it as a favour to a friend, uh, his wedding the other week. And I got there, I was thinking, yeah. Cause I, you know, everyone was, everyone had, had their little role to play, and then people were doing a good job. <laughs> I love you taking it seriously. And I did, I spent wedding. ages putting together some CDs. <laughs> Special selection I love that! Because what I did was I, I burned them on iTunes. Did you turn up with your own headphones round your neck? O own headphones, wearing a suit, but headphones. A metal case. Didn't need it. Just had them all in one small box. <laughs> Brilliant. Boom. Um, I thought this is good stuff. I got some classics here. Give me an example. Give me an example of the, like the, the, the first hour, the warm up hour. Rick, um, I've, I'm coming straight in with, uh, Frankie Valley, oh what a night! Brilliant track. I mean, when those beats start at the beginning, who's not getting on the dance floor? Wait a minute, what's this following up? Go on, it's the Jacksons. Well, I want you back. I want you back. Brilliant. It sounds good at the moment, Carl. Yeah. So um, I'm thinking, like, at least I'm going to, I'm going to roar this because you know they laid on a good spread. The ceremony was nice. The food was nice. I'm thinking this is going to be the the piece de resistance. Yeah. Alarm bell started ringing. Why? When I realised there was a marquee outside. Of course, it's a balmy summer evening. I'm stuck inside oh. on the dance floor. Inside, I'm thinking I'm going to be struggling here to get them in. <laughs> even with, even with flavours like this, I thought I'd struggle, Rick. <laughs> so I'm sat there in my suit. <laughs> there, I'm sat behind this little, I'm sat behind this little DJ console. <laughs> I've got through all the big numbers. There's one or two people making some token effort, but frankly, most people are outside. Everywhere oh, no. so I was livid. Of course, they couldn't hear it out there. So I was playing to an empty room, really, and I was furious. I was absolutely furious because oh, no. I mean, what is you know, you're wasting my time. <laughs> you're wasting now. I could have just stepped the CD on. They're wasting I Frankie Valley's. <laughs> Frankie Valley's. They're wasting the Jackson Five's. They're wasting you know, D Light's time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I'm sat there, and there's like, yeah, there's a couple of people making a cursory effort. Mainly when they come to get a drink from the bar, they might have a no. little quick, you know, couple of two. Are you shout, we don't want your. Not interested. Or, 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 yeah. All of your no one. All of your no one at all. <laughs> and. uh, then there's even there's a microphone set up because people have been doing speeches. This little girl gets on the mic, right? It's being funneled through the speaker system. So every time I put my headphones on, oh, I Miss think, Dynamite was it? <laughs> it wasn't sadly Miss Dynamite. Although <laughs> she decided to uh, have a little go at MCing, she was screeching a little head. How off. old is she? Oh, I don't know, eight or nine. <laughs> at their most annoying. <laughs> When, when children are they're most annoying because they got a bit of confidence there. They're a bit cocky. They're not shy anymore. They're a bit arrogant. Yeah. She's screeching her head off. So I'm playing, you know. <laughs> and she doesn't know. Look at your face. I'm playing into the groove. No one's getting into the groove because she's because <laughs> she's going mental. She's just going. Ah, what's this? What's this? I don't know what this is. Play something I know. Oh. I mean, I haven't got any bloody DJ Otsu or Crazy Frog. I'm not going to play what what you. So she's just screeching along, ruining it for everyone. And I say it when there was no one there. So me, she was ruining it for me. <laughs> we, I mean, I'm furious. But of course as well, every time she screeched, it went through my headphones. <laughs> so I, uh, so of course I'm here, and then this, her dad comes along, right? And I'm oh. thinking, all right, he's gonna, he's seen what's happening. I just imagine you in your suit, sweating, getting annoyed at someone Literally. ruining your set that yeah. no one's listening to. So no one's to. listening to. <laughs> I think, oh, well, her dad's coming over, he's gonna put, put pay to this. He's realised that, you know, she's causing a disturbance. He comes over there, joins in. No. Sits her, sits her on the la- on his lap, he's just saying, hey, she's having a whirl of a time, I'm thinking I'm furious. I'm thinking it's his responsibility to shut her up, he's yeah, not gonna do anything. I what agree. can I do? I can't step in. No. And I know very well that if I interfere, he's gonna say, oh, well, she's enjoying herself and no one's dancing anyway, and we've just got into a fracas. Yeah. I didn't want to start a fight. No. Cause so, um, I don't know, but he'd have knocked you out, wouldn't he? Someone would have got knocked out. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm not saying who it would have been, but 
you know, but there was- to bear in mind, Rick, there would have been two of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so I didn't want to get into a fight with him. And, uh, <laughs> and he was so unplugged. Anyway, so my friend came along, he, he, he realised what was happening, and I didn't have the guts to, uh, to unplug the microphone. Cause I, they'd have- he'd have known, you see. Yeah. So I got my friend to do it when she had her back to me. <laughs> So he pulled the plug out, she, the microphone went dead, she went, what's going on? I went, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I said, I don't know. She said, where'd the microphone was? I said, you must have broken it. <laughs> oh I don't, I don't God. know what's going on. Someone will probably make you pay for that. Oh and, uh, anyway, at least we shut her up. <laughs> that is great! But, uh, <laughs> but it just went, it really went from bad to worse. <laughs> and, you know there's that thing when you panic, you start panicking, so you start, you're putting on a lot of flavours that you would have saved to the, to the last hour. What are we talking, boo shake, shake, shake? Exactly, in? you're throwing him in early, Love Shack's yeah. coming on way too soon. Really? Oh, Love Shack before 11? <laughs> I, it's heresy, but I had to do it. <laughs> But anyway, in the end, the, uh, the, I made the bride go and get some people in. I thought, I said, look, it's your special night, <laughs> alright, and they're gonna enjoy this. I'll be honest, love, this is a washout, and it's up to you <laughs> exactly. to turn this wedding yeah. around, or I'm walking. I'm walking, and I tell you, they're gonna have a sour memory of this evening, yeah, unless you bring so some people in. Yeah, so everyone is dancing. So, I, so she got him in at the end, and, Brilliant. and I'll tell you this, Carl, I mean, I don't know what you say, but they were loving it. They were absolutely loving it. A bloke came over and said, have you got Amarillo? I said, no, but I put on something even better, Delilah. I have never- I mean, wedding crowds always go for Delilah. Less f a song, of course, about old man killing his wife. It always goes down very well, strangely, at weddings. <laughs> yeah. They get into a sort of hokey-cokey thing, they went yeah. berserk for it, and I was following it up with, I had the monkeys, I had all sorts going on. Brilliant. Of course, you know what happens. What? I'm going go great guns, people are absolutely loving it, they're rocking it. I throw in, um, uh, Oh, I, I had something cracking on at the end of- Come on, Eileen, of course, was on. People sure. were going berserk for it. Which is unfortunate, because the bride's name was Eileen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, then the bride pipes up, I'm throwing the, uh, bouquet. So they all traipse off outside again. Oh. I was furious! Oh, no. I grabbed- I plugged the microphone back in, I said, what are you doing? <laughs> we got, you know, but they went out there, and of course you can't get them back once they've done that, because all the women are running around, I got the- I got the, you know, thing, no. and then they got to wave everyone off, throw the confetti. They ru they ruined your day. I was having a great time and they ruined it. She ruined your special day. She ruined my special night. Oh, no. You know, what, would you, her head. what would you put on about now, Carl? What I thought was DJ. Yeah. Probably about a world party. Go on, Interesting. <laughs> Put the message in the box, put the message in the car, drive the car in the world, and I, uh, I'm imagining Rick, that that message is make poverty history. Um, <laughs> that's world party, put the yeah. message in the box. Yeah. Um, can I just say quickly while I think of it, um, we get a lot of emails from people, a lot of texts saying, can you say, you know, can you send a big shout out, mm. stuff like that. You know, I've just looked at one now, Scott and Julie in Australia are listening, they want a big shout out, big shout yeah. to them. But there's so many people that do it, and I'm obviously, just want to say, sorry we never get to your emails, we're very, very lazy, we never really get to look through them, um, but we obviously do appreciate you emailing in, texting in, stuff like that. Um, and also, can I send a big shout out to my grandparents, who I believe might be listening on their new digital radio? They're pretty high tech. Yeah, they're yeah, very yeah, nice yeah. country. Yeah. Are they, are they, are they the merchants of, uh, uh Bristol? Yeah. 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 Props Good. to them. Props to them, yeah. Um, oh. yeah, no, uh, it's a slightly truncated show, isn't it, today, Carl? We've got nothing like to trust. I don't like change, and that's what's happened. I'm not you don't do you? You're like Rain Man. Yeah. He really is like Rain Man. Uh, anything change? It, 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 it's got to get in a little routine. You can't. Uh, no, I don't like to. I'm not like Suzanne's mum and dad and what have you. Where routine cannot change no matter what. Like what? Well, we've talked about it. Where you know, if it's a Tuesday, I'm having sausage, egg, and chips, no matter where I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what they're like. <laughs> Right. That's what, they're, that's what they'll remember, actually. When I'm saying about stuff about Live 8 and all that, you know, people will remember. If people said to a dad, you know, you remember Live 8? Okay, what day was it on? Tuesday when we had sausage and chips. <laughs> 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 Nothing changes. But the thing is today, normally we have a bit of a, you know, I know what we're doing where and all that and it's all sort of messed up. We don't usually know what we're doing where. We no. say, what should we do next? No, you but, go, what? but I know, like, Rockbusters has been done early. Right. So that's that's normally done. That's really throwing it. Uh oh, uh oh. I just uh -oh. don't. I don't like all this change and that. It's messing about, isn't it? Rain man. <laughs> so what what do you want now? Well, what about song with the story? <sighs> See with the. Uh, right. Well, last week. Look at him. He's in a genuinely foul mood. Uh, no, he's actually rocking. Yeah. He's actually rocking like Rain Man as well. Last week we did, like you say, Eric Clapton. This is the section where we play a song with a story. I think every song, if it's a good song. It's got a story, you've got to listen from, to it, to, so, you know, from the start, mm. you get in the middle, you're going, oh, how's it going to end and all that. Yeah. You wait another minute, you know the ending, you're happy. But, but, the thing is, as Steve said, um, 
you know, sometimes we're disappointed with it, so it's just not a good story. And as Steve said, I I'm not sure you're finding what you need in a song for story. Why don't you read a, bo uh, a book, a novel? If you want a really good story that engrosses you and kind of, why don't you read a book? You're not gonna get it from a, a pop song. I have time for a book. Song's three and a half minutes. And that's it, is it? And that, that satisfied your... Well, yeah, it gets you thinking for a few minutes, then you move on. This then you one, stop thinking. Two <laughs> minutes fifty, this one, right? It's brilliant. Go on, it's about, uh, last week we talked about the, the little cripple fella, right? Mm, this one- we, uh, As I say, I don't think we say cripple anymore, but go on. Alright, this one, someone emailed in saying, if you want a song about that, this is a song you ought to listen to, right? Right. It's about this fella who, uh, basically something happened, I think he's in a wheelchair, right, mm. for some reason. Uh- You thought that last time? His wife, um, you know, likes going out. She doesn't take him, take him with her when, when she goes out. Right. Is um, it Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town? Yeah. G brilliant song. Well, we'll just play it then? Yeah, great song. Mm -hmm. You've painted up your lips and rolled and curled your tinted hair. For God's sakes, turn around. What do you mean? Oh, it's just, uh, it's a good story. It starts off well and that. You're feeling yeah. sorry for him, but then he says, where's my gun? Yeah. Because well, she's a slut. Why? Because she's going off. Yeah, but what, what does, what does he expect her to do? What? Just cause it, it, he paralyzes his legs fighting for his country, presumably in Vietnam War, says that crazy Asian war. So he's gone, he's fought for his country, he's taken a bullet, he's come home, he can't walk, he should be a hero, and then he, his wife's going out putting it about downtown. Why do I never meet women like Ruby? <laughs> Forever lost the magic numbers on XFM 104.9. Well, the concert's kicked off, Steve. Yeah, I'm a bit annoyed that we're still here, really. Let's try and wrap this up quite quickly and then shoot. No one's listening anyway. Nah, we could talk about anything. Well, we do. Yeah, true. It makes no difference. To we us, could do a lot more swearing than we normally do. <laughs> <laughs> we do even more. I was oh. talking to Carl the other night, um, because I've been watching, rewatching for some reason that film Witness with Harrison Ford, where he's a uh, policeman that um, has to protect a little boy who's part of an Amish community. Amish. 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 Yeah. And I tried to explain to Carl. You, you look plain, John Book. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, I was obviously trying to explain the Amish to Carl. Uh, he'd never heard of them. Completely stony faced. Amazing. Used. Um, no, for those. Okay, you explained it to him, have yeah. you? Okay then. Yeah. Now I don't know what you said, but I'm assuming you got it right, right? Carl, now tell me, tell me back now. What are the Amish? Um, they're just just people who um, sort of live uh, like in the olden times. So to them, they're sort of in about 1842 or something. So they're getting old. Papers and that. Um, they no, haven't caught up no, to. No, 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 no. They haven't cut. They, they, don't, they don't have telly. They don't they deny. Don't. They don't deny that the twentieth century has happened. They just don't want to be part of it. They, they they look up and they see planes and they know what they are and they go into the town and they see in the window of Dixon's a telly. They just they just don't want to be part of it. No, they they are still living. They still they are still living like it's yeah yeah that's, eight, that's, eight, that's, that's what I mean yeah yeah but they don't they they know they know about everything else they just don't want to be part of it because they think that the sort of the uh, uh, revolution um, was a bad thing they think it, you know that society became more and more depraved and they wanted to go away from it and they want to go back to old values and they think they don't need TV and 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 jets and that way of life they can they can survive in the old way because the old way was better missing out on live eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but they haven't had Band Aid yet. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, I think the, this is the problem that Carl had. He, he, in his mind, they were just a bit delayed, so yeah. that in his head they were slowly moving towards the. They wouldn't be century. able to watch most of these bands. All their electric guitar. They could, they, they'd be allowed to watch Tracy Chapman. Yeah, doing an acoustic set. Yeah, between yeah. the bands. Yeah, yeah. that would be all right. They'd but no, in Carl's mind, it's like if he. Although if they, they wouldn't like Fast Car. <laughs> they wouldn't like a scene about that, they go, I don't know what you're talking about. Pony and Trap, you got a pony and trap, <laughs> that'd be alright. But, but are they still, do they still get sort of rubbish posts and that saying we need your money for this or, you no, know, get behind this charity? They live in a uh, isolated community, they live, they're farmers, aren't they? They're farmers. It's an agricultural community and they're obviously very staunchly religious. Um, and that, in actual fact it would suit you very well because you hate crowds, you hate groups of people, you don't like the modern world. 
Well, you'd love it down there, wouldn't he you? He wouldn't like getting up at four o'clock to milk a cow, though, would he? Well, no, but he'd get mm. used to it. Go back to bed, couldn't you? He's probably out. I mean, have they got anything to do with the the Hare Krishna people? No, no, nothing at all. Because out of all all the religions, that's you know, I'm not a religious person. I, I don't I don't understand. You're it. only saying Hare Krishna because you've got the head. That's the only reason no, you think it'd be. I'm halfway there. Yeah, but, but the thing <laughs> yeah. is. Out of out of all it, you just what was what was that? <laughs> well, he just fell out of my pocket where I'm I'm nearly laying down. <laughs> That's the danger of wearing sweatpants <laughs> everywhere you go. I don't think you ever lying down in a chair. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm I'm you know I've never been a religious type. You know if people oh. want to do it, I let them do it and what have you. Good of you. But out of all of them, mm. the I, I want one that's not going to take over your life. I don't want one where you've got to get up three times a day and you've got to go and pray and that you've got to get up early. Forget that. It's yep. getting in the way. <laughs> but if it's something like, um, I was walking to work the other day, right, across Oxford Street, mm. um, there's a little Harry Krishna fella there, and, uh, he sort of had, uh, he had a leaflet and stuff, and, uh, he said, you know, are you interested? And I said, what do you do? And, uh, he said, well, you know, we're against getting stressed out and what have you. And, um, he gave me a plum. <laughs> he found out food for some reason. <laughs> but, um, I sort of asked a few questions. <laughs> Let us deal with yeah. These two bold people, one yeah. of which is wearing an orange smock. Holding a plum in the middle. He hands the other one a, pl pl a plum. It's almost, it's almost like you can imagine some kind of religious painting. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. But, but, yeah. Uh, you know, what, what is their sort of main thing, because he didn't really tell me that much. He was a, a Japanese bloke, so I didn't know what, what he was saying that, that much. Why? He well, wasn't speaking English? Not, not very well. He wasn't the best sales bloke to send out for them, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But what, what's that? Are they, you're saying they're nothing like- Well, I believe Hare Krishna is a, is a kind of, um, as an offshoot of a sort of Buddhist faith. It is, and, I think um, they are Buddhist, aren't they? Yeah, and obviously the, obviously their most, their, their kind of trademark, as it were, is that they have to say, I believe they have to say Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna in a certain rhythm, in a certain order, a certain amount of times per day. That's why you see them all down the street saying Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna, because it's actually a, a sort of religious chant which they're obliged to do. So you see, even if you go into the Hare Krishna faith, you may find yourself, you know, in Tesco or whatever, Ever forced to say Harry Krishna, Harry, Harry Krishna, press out, one. Out loud, uh, out not loud. just thinking it. Yeah, no, no, out loud. You can put it on an iPod and you couldn't put that on an iPod. No, it doesn't count. No, I think you have to actually say it. So I guess that kind of eats into your into your social life a little bit. And then the, and there's, there's the wearing orange as well. Particularly frustrating. I imagine if you're in a in a cinema or a library, a little bit awkward there. You know, midway through. Um, or Star you Wars, live next door to a bloke called Harry Krishna, <laughs> yeah. who constantly thinks you're calling him. Yeah, that, that probably. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's in this. I mean, I don't think we've quite done the the uh, Harry Krishna faith. It's full service there. But uh, so yeah. interesting to you. I mean, you, you you got handed a plan. You've been treated well by them. Yeah. Well, but he couldn't tell. I, I just wanted to know how much time it would take up. Uh, what are the benefits? Mm. Um, you know, what can you? Do what can well, I think do? the benefits are they probably don't get stressed out. They've probably got that sort of that that zen, that that that, that chiness about them where they they try and interact and quite meditative. Yeah. Yeah. I've got some nice trainers as well, don't they? With their yeah. Their orange. What clothes. are you looking for then in a faith car? You say you it, it's what are the benefits? I mean, obviously Catholicism, you get the communion wine and um, bread. So yeah, but I can afford that. Right. Um, probably. Uh, just, just, I liked the Crusaders, I was forced into joining that as a kid, because a mate sort of joined it, and, uh, he sort of said, are you joining? Uh, I sort of swore at him, I said, I'm not doing that, right? Yeah. He said, right, if you don't come with me, I'll, uh, I'll tell your mum that you just swore. <laughs> so I was like, oh. So, so I went, <laughs> so I went along, and they used to just go on the Friday when they played, you know, Sabutio and stuff, and then I went on one Sunday, and it was, it was totally different. It was no Sabutio. There was no sort of, you know, uh... Table tennis. Uh, the thing where you hold a, a thing and knock things over. Skittles. Uh, Skittles. There was all that on a Friday. Went on the Sunday, it was rubbish. <laughs> he said, right, sit down in this room. They gave me a Bible. Thought, this looks too heavy, this. This is too big. I'm not interested in this, but... And, uh, I never went again. I used to hide on a Sunday when they came round. And, um, <laughs> that, that's, that's been the only sort of- <laughs> I did that! Yeah. I suddenly, why did it suddenly turn out to have to hide on a Sunday <laughs> when they're coming round? Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave. They wouldn't leave. Who uh, was it? Were they adults? It was a, yeah, sort of a, well, he seemed like an adult to me at the time, but he was probably about 27. Like well, that, that is an adult. 
Yeah, but do you know what I mean? He seemed a lot older when I was a kid. Yeah. And he came knocking and that, and he used to say to me, Mum, I'll just tell him I'm ill or something. And, uh, he used to hang around to see if I- if I'd eventually come out to play and that. And if I did, I think they would've grabbed me and, and took me there. I love the idea that you want- that for you religion has to pr bring with it some kind of gift. It's like, you know, join our faith and you get an alarm clock radio. It's but, like something but like- but I, think religion, but I think religion does bring a gift. Usually, it's- Well, the, the gift of the Lord. Well, well, the gift of everlasting life, isn't mm -hmm. it? And that's the problem with it, you know. A lot of people believe in it because they think. But the, for Carl, oh, right. his, his feeling is like that should be a given. That's safe. I'm definitely going home with eternal life. But yeah. what else can I have? Is there well, an you iPod? You have to have it? a religion because I, obviously I don't have a religion. I don't miss it, and I wouldn't want one. I'm an atheist, and that, that's out of that's out of belief. That's out of logic, and we don't get into the the politics or the yeah. the morality of it. Why do you, Why do you feel you need a religion? Why don't you just get a hobby? Well, I, I didn't want one. I don't want one. I just was saying that, you know, if I was to get one, which one would I go for? <laughs> is what I'm saying. Mm. I'd like mean? to see you perhaps as a Jew. I think a, a Ju Judaism would suit you well, I think. What are the hours like for that? Tough. It can be tricky. That's what I mean. I don't want anything <laughs> that's, you know. And they, they have a day where they don't eat and stuff. I couldn't be doing that. <laughs> so so they have days when they eat a lot too much? Yeah, but what happens if I'm not that hungry that day? <laughs> like I say, I don't like change. No. I mean, I like my Cheerios in the morning. <laughs> I don't- I don't- <laughs> I still have that other girl in my head by Elvis Costello and Brett Bacharach, uh, on this final XFM show, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, we nearly gotta wrap it up. I think we gotta do the, uh, Rockbusters winner and give someone those lovely prizes, monkey news, then we're out of here. We'll yeah. maybe come back, maybe do some Christmas specials. I don't want to make any promises. <laughs> <laughs> right then, first one. First one was, uh, Richard's kid, uh, he cuts hair for a living. Yeah, what's oh, that? That was, uh, well, try and work it out. No, you know? it's no point. <laughs> Dick's son, yeah, he was a barber. Bar, bar, Barbara Dixon, right? Dixon, work. Dixon. Well, again, Barbara D Dixon. Right, <laughs> no, so it wasn't Barbara Dixon, was it? <laughs> so that's did, that one. did Ronnie Corbett ever say, "Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Barbara Dixon"? <laughs> second no, one, second never one did. Was, did uh, he? he never did. I have a problem saying the French word for well. What's what's the French word for well? Bye, isn't it? That's good. What? No, that's that's good. Then. Well, well, no, what? In it, uh, in it, bien. Yeah. Yeah, alright. Mm. I have a problem saying it, so I can't, I can't say it. I can't say bien. I can't say, can't say bien. Can't say casabian. Right? So, <laughs> they managed to work that one out. Can't, can't That's say- That's one of your worst, that. Can't, can't say bien. Can't well, say bien. Can't say bien, it's not, it's not- uh, it's And the last one- work. That's terrible! Eight kebabs, two kebabs, plus fifty-seven kebabs, times twenty-seven kebabs. This fella is struggling working it out. What's, what's the answer there? DS. Right? I don't know some, uh, right? So he's, he's struggling working it out. He's, uh, so don't know some, don't know some, um, right? <laughs> so they got that right as well, so. What, what, what was the answer? Don't know summer. Don't know summer. Yeah, don't know summer. Don't know summer, don't know summer. So, uh, just pick, just so pick one, on Steve. Went out on a high then. Steve, just pick one. We went no, out on a high. high. That was shocking. What about, uh, let's have a look, there's, uh. Well, it's the first one to get all three. Steve, what's the first one with all three? Well, there's so many here. Yeah, I mean. but this is the first one that came through in time wise. Um, probably that one, no. No, I don't like Rob because he's been slagging us off. In fact, no, let's give it to Rob. If, yeah, if, he's, the the first, if he's the first. No, to be honest with you, Rob's been slagging us off, but at least he knows. I mean, at least he's got some taste. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, right, if he was the so, first, then Rob's the winner. It, well, yeah, well, give Rob, he gets a ladder 49 and a bunch of other DVDs. But that means you go straight no, into the hat. Him in the there, no, I'm where? just going to write his name now. I'm going to throw that straight in the, uh, in the hat. I can imagine that no one, even the people. Who've entered are that excited? Not because the prizes aren't great, but I'm worried that they don't appreciate it, Rick. Do you know? I get the feeling that our listeners they just don't appreciate the fact that we've gone to all this trouble. We've got the Homer Simpson drawing things like that. I just feel like these people don't deserve it. <laughs> and do you know what? It's weird. I just wish we had a better quality of listener. Yeah. Like, people who listen to Radio Two, they deserve it. You know, they're elderly and infirm. Some of them, they they could really it would really cheer them up. But our lot, you know, drug addicts, yeah, let me pick you know, out. Tr truck drivers. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna- I've just put all the names in the hat, all the previous winners from the previous weeks and- Who's Rob winner? Is this Pilkey, um, gonna put it out? Do you want Pilkey or do you want Ricky? Oh, well, let's- let's have the straight monkey do it. Alright. Plunge your hand in there. Is it just- 
That's one, isn't that's it? That's it, just pull, yeah. Yeah, pull that one out, check who it is. Right, it's, uh, Gavin Thompson in Edinburgh. Well done, Gav. Are we gonna get them up there? You've got a poster and you've got a paper. They're amazing prizes. Yeah, but the spinal tap one, it's about five foot, isn't it? Well, they can post it. It'll cost them a few quid. It's a radio station. I think you should have to come and collect it. <laughs> no, just because then it'll at least oh, do it. It'll prove that Where's he's from? Edinburgh. Give it to Bob Galdoff. I'll give it to Bob Galdoff. <laughs> he's walking up there, see? Is he? He can jog Chewing brakes. Fishing for a dream. That's what we're fishing for, isn't it? We're fishing for a dream today. What's that mean? Poverty. I don't know. I don't know what I was talking about. I was. I don't know. I was it doesn't know. matter what you're saying, Rick. No um, one's listening. No one's listening. Well, we've got to finish anyway. To, I mean, think about the fact that we. I mean, think how small our percentage of listeners is anyway. Anyway. And then you two are on stage yeah. at the moment. This is like broadcasting during Christmas dinner. <laughs> yeah. This is the same. It's just on the hospital radio. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Where everyone's got an iPod for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> On the ward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we've, well, we've just got, we're gonna go through, we're gonna go through now till half past and I've got to rush off, I'm afraid, um, to, to live eight. Um. Don't, don't apologise, mate. <laughs> when people see the glam that you're bringing to that event. <laughs> they don't even care about the people introducing it. Comedians going there going, ladies and gentlemen, just get on with it. No, I agree. No, I've got a good joint there. Two blokes will get on with it. Bring on Madonna. Um, but we're gonna give it to him. Carl, we're gonna t go through to the end. We've done everything we have to do. Monkey news. The final monkey news of the year, possibly. It's been a joy. I just like to say, for, you know, I'm half of myself, Steve Merchant, and this little bald mank. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, we should just point out as well, if you, if you miss, uh, Rockbusters while we're away. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, you can log on to xfm.co.uk forward slash rockbusters where you can actually see Carl himself, um, playing, uh, introducing you to an interactive game of rockbusters. Looks very much like blockbusters. It does, surprisingly. But yeah, you can, you can join into that. Uh, and there's also, uh, talking of monkey news, there's, uh, there's a link on, um, on the website, I'm trying to think where you go. I think if you go on my little biography bit, someone's done some animation to some old monkey news. Oh, it's brilliant. It's great. Right. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you if you have withdrawal symptoms of monkey news, then you can find some classic. And it's monkey animated. News, it? It's classic monkey news. I feel drained today. Do you? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the strangest radio show in the world. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Because the, well, we can do that. We can talk about this and go, oh, I feel drained today. Just like he's not. Like, no one's listening. Because that's the sort of thing you say socially and no one listens. Like, you're just really watching up, oh, I feel drained today. It's rhetorical. Yeah. You're not expecting anyone, not even your loved ones, to go, oh, really? They just go, oh, uh, that. But to do it live on air. Yeah. Oh, no on. one's listening. Got what I mean is just give us a jingle. But the, but the, <laughs> Exactly. But the truth the is, the contempt we have for our poor listeners but is the truth unbelievable. Is the listeners aren't listening, and yeah. we don't want to be here. <laughs> so this really is one of the most pointless things oh. ever. No, I would have been, been quite happy to do a full show. But and, you know what? The flow of it's just. I nice. would love to listen to this back in ten years. <laughs> this actual show. Let's keep this forever. Let's keep this show forever. The, the show we went early. We were bored. It was a day we're trying to save Africa, but we're a little bit annoyed that no one's listening. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Right, once and for all, the final monkey news but of the not, year. Oh, go on. What? Yeah. What were you gonna say? No, I was just gonna say, if you're not into the Live 8 and you're gay, you're not listening. <laughs> because you're on a walk. <laughs> right, okay. Right. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news! Right, there's this, uh, card game going on. Right. <laughs> In uh, in the uh, a, a, a big hotel in uh, in Vegas. Right. right. The Lux Luxor Hotel in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, it's a major car game. All the all the big players and that sure. were uh, were involved. Mm. Right? They're all invited. Mm. Anyway, so they all uh, they all meet up in this dark room at the back of the. Oh, <laughs> there we go, dark room. Dark room. But hairy fella. So it was, uh, it was brilliant at poker. I yeah. say it's a it's a big game and that everyone's been waiting for it. So it's played in the back room, not not in the main entrance bit, right? <laughs> So anyway, like I say, it's dark in there and what have you, and, and the players went in. There was already someone sat in there, right? Right. But uh, they couldn't, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't quite see. Was he a short, hairy bloke with slightly longer <laughs> arms than legs? <laughs> couldn't see him. Where, is, it, where, where his arms slightly longer than his legs? Couldn't see him. Being dark was he uh, holding his hand of cards with his feet? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, oh, so God. the cards were dealt, right? Cards yeah. were dealt. Games going on. <laughs> his cards with his feet. 
Game, <laughs> game went on for hours, right? Look, was... No, it was this, we, no, the, the terrible thing is that not even we're listening to I Carl know, now. I know. No one, there. literally, no one is listening it's so to Carl. insulting. There was a lot of smoking going on. It's right? going on. A lot of eating, a lot of eating and nuts going on. <laughs> that was a bit weird because they don't normally get through as many, but for, for this night. <laughs> so, I'm. Um, <laughs> come on, let's just play Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. See you maybe Christmas time. Goodbye. Yeah, right.